for the past 10 years on American Sports Cavalcade. No race car is harder on the driver than winged outlaw sprinters. It's not if you're going to crash, it's when. The tracks can be rough, the competition always aggressive, and it's not every man that mentally or physically can deal with an 800 horsepower, 1250 pound powder keg. But do the fans ever love them, especially in the heartland under the lights? That's why we begin travel to Knoxville Speedway in Knoxville, Iowa, a big half mile legendary for pleasing the most demanding dirt track followers. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Evans and welcome to our coverage from Knoxville. Engines already warming up in the pits, almost 20,000 people already in the grandstands, and many of those will have all their eyes on an invader from the west. A young man, I mean young, 17 years old, Blake Robinson. You know, Blake, you were a national champion in many sprints, but those are toys compared to these things. Yeah, these these got a lot of horsepower, you know. Um, it's a little bit different. Uh, the cars are a lot heavier, a um, lot faster guys. Uh, Steve Kinzer, he's he's always tough. Um, it's it's a lot different. You've been around these guys all your life, though, with your dad. Yeah, uh, my dad raced the, the Pioneer, that Ford Nance car out in California, and uh, they were the first Ford car to win a uh, Outlaw show, uh, I think. And um, and uh, I just used to watch in the stands, watch a lot of laps at Baylands every Saturday night, and uh, now I'm here. Confident tonight? Yeah, we're just going to try to do the best we can. We've uh, been paying our dues, I guess, this year. Um, turned over a couple times and stuff, but uh, yeah, we feel pretty confident. Folks, this young man has only been in one of these cars for about five months, and he starts on the pole of heat number two tonight. Good luck to you. Thank you. Now, for the flip side on age and experience, here's my buddy Brock Yates. Well, Steve, I'm with a man who they say started it all. They call him the original outlaw, and Bobby Allen has been around this deal for a long, long time. And, Bobby, the last time I saw you in Knoxville was a couple of years ago when you won the Nationals. But now just a kind of a good old night of sprint car racing. It's uh, really traditional stuff. It's got to be good to come back here and race every day, no matter what the stakes are. Yeah, the weather paying good, and it's fun because of all the people, and uh, just it's a good race to run. When you come out here, uh, if, uh, you know, uh, you run an Outlaws, uh, you run here so many times, is it pretty much automatic to set this race, uh, set the car up, or has this racetrack changed a lot from year to year? Well, not only that, everything changes. It comes here, it seems like, you know, there's a lot of money at stake, so everybody comes with new ideas and different things, and uh, you try different stuff, and the racetrack's different every night, and you've got a whole new group of guys sometime, or the same ones have got different stuff, and uh, you try different things and hope it works better, and sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Well, I'll tell you what, you, you deceive everybody because every time I see a same old 1A, it always looks like it never, ever changes. I know darn well you're doing a lot of stuff underneath that body work. Well, this one changed a little bit. This is a car we started a year with, and uh, it's got a little bit too many races on it. I'm ready for another car, but uh, we think we can get her dialed in for tonight. Okay, go get them. Thank you all. Okay, Bobby Allen, the original outlaw, Steve. We'll be seeing both of those drivers later on. Right now, it's time for heat number one. It'll be 10 laps of racing, four transferred to the A feature, four transferred to the B feature, and the rest of them are in big trouble. And brought not a lot of household names as far as the sprint car world in this heat or tonight, but there are cars from all over the country, brilliant young drivers who've got a lot of local publicity, and the hardcore fans here at Knoxville want to find out how good they really are. Oh, absolutely. We have Johnny Mackerson, who's out of York, Pennsylvania, uh, a guy in here from Everett, Washington, Bobby Burrow. Somebody, uh, one of the drivers, Gerald Haniston from San Lorenzo, California, from all over the United States. I come into Knoxville. This is the big test. This is where you make a name for yourself. The green flag is out, and Johnny Mackison Jr. takes control in the 65 car. A minute getting around Rusty McClure in the 63 car. He started on the pole. Okay, that's the 4J, Jeff Shepard, and on the 66 of Mike Peters there in a battle for third place. And as you said, it is important. You've got to get up among the top four to move ahead tonight, Steve. And it's important to point out there's no inversion here. These cars started based on their quick qualifying times from earlier. So no showbiz. This is hardcore racing, but the best man wins. All right, that's the 4J car, uh, that blue automobile of Jeff Shepard out of Maryland. He is sitting in third spot, but he is trying to challenge that 63 automobile to Rusty McClure for second. Well, everybody would like to win it, but the main objective here is to finish no further back than fourth. In fact, right there is the fourth place car at 66B. That is Mike Peters. He's on the bump spot, and challenging him is the 52U car of Bobby Burroughs. 
Burroughs does not want to run the BB trip. He wants to go right to the A. Right. Bobby Burroughs in here from Everett, Washington. Uh, classic example of how guys come from all around the United States to uh, run in Knoxville. And here goes Bobby Burroughs, the 52 U car. He gets around Mike Peters into that fourth position, but now he's got to hang on to it. That's where all the pressure is in that fourth spot. Okay, so as we watch uh, Burrow break away after he gets by Peters, uh, gonna, looks like he's got a pretty good hold on that position right now, but uh, things could change. All we need is a yellow for a restart, and uh, it's all, oh, and we may have it right now. That's Jeff Shepard in the 4J. He was in the third spot. Jeff Shepard had a good run going, having moved up from his fourth starting position. But now, because he will most likely finish out of the top eight in this heat, he'll be forced to put it on the trailer. As heat one forms up for the restart, this caution is not good news for number 65, Johnny Mackison, who will lose his commanding lead over the rest of the field. With five laps remaining in heat one, behind leader number 65, Johnny Mackison Jr., will be number 63, Rusty McClure, and 52U, Bobby Burroughs, rounding out the top three spot. But remember, the race to watch is for that transfer position into the A feature. Brock? Okay, Steve, well, Burroughs is being challenged uh, by Mike Peters right behind him in that 66P, and then Greg Woolley in the 97, that black automobile. Of course, those two guys, especially Woolley, trying to get up amongst them because at this point, back at this spot, he is out of the program if he stays there. And the more they race here in heat number one, really the better the racetrack gets. You can see the groove getting wider and wider. Pretty soon, they may be able to run higher and higher on the racetrack. Another man in that black 97 car is Greg Woolley. He's come a long ways to race here at Knoxville tonight. He does not want to be embarrassed. He is trying to get around Mike. Mike Peters, the 66 B car for that fourth position. And so far, he's picking him up. He sure is. It looks like as he comes off turn two, he'll shoot right by him. So he moves into the uh, fourth spot. But look at this race for a second. That is Bobby Burroughs, who's uh, out of Everett, Washington, getting by the 63 car of Rusty McClure as we go into the final lap. Bobby Burroughs has been driving the wheels off that race car. But look at this. There's a pass for the fourth position. Mike Peters has gone around Greg Woolley. There is our winner of heat number one, 65, Johnny Nackerson Jr. started outside of the front row. But on the very last lap, Mike Peters has relegated Greg Woolley to the B feature. And Johnny Nackerson, well, he's smiling now. Not so much there, but he is now. <laughs> I'll guarantee you came in here from that Pennsylvania circuit. Very tough running runner out there in uh, out of York, Pennsylvania to win this first heat of the night as uh, Bobby Burroughs comes in second. Rusty McClure and Mike Peters, they're guaranteed a spot in the A feature. Greg Welly, well, he's going to have to work harder in the B main to get into the A if, in fact, he can do it. And a few other guys will get another shot in that B-main as well. Hannestead, Lampelius, and Thurman. Unfortunately, Larry Neighbors and Jeff Shepard, they're through for the night. So let's go to Steve with the winner. Well, Johnny, Pennsylvania draws first blood. You were gone at the start, then you were gone again at the restart. Yeah, the car's working really well there. And after that second restart, uh, right front tours are on that wedge underneath my axle. And uh, made the car get a little squirrely there at the end. But I mean, the car's working really well tonight. Uh, David Brown has it working really good. Uh, hopefully, we'll do well tonight in the future. The track looks pretty nice. Yeah, the track's in excellent shape here. It's uh, really fast tonight, and it's pretty racy right now. Let's hope it stays that way. Yeah, I believe it really well. Okay. Good job. Brock? A-U. Mike, you guys were really scrambling back there mid-pack, but you finally got by him for fourth, huh? Well, fourth was a last transfer spot into the A tonight, and, and uh, we just, uh, everybody was trying hard for it, and we come out with it, luckily. But uh, we've got we've got some changes to do. We're not we're not quick enough, and we need to we need to get going a little faster. Well, you guys always start out these, uh, the first heats always, uh, it's always a little slick and crazy out there. Your later heats, it kind of racetrack settles down a little bit. You guys are kind of groping around out there just a few hot laps before, so it's a uh, racetrack doesn't have much of a cushion. No, it really doesn't, and it's greasy on the bottom, and it's a little slick up on the top. So all we have really is the middle, and it's pretty narrow right now, and it's hard to, hard to pass. And, and if you get out of that spot, uh, that's usually when the passing happens. Okay, Steve? Well, if you start at the back, you got to get out of that spot if you're going to go forwards. And I would tell you, on the pole here of heat number two is the youngster we talked to at the top of the show, 17-year-old Blake Robertson, car number 15 from Hanford, California. And his father's name is Brock, so he's assured a real future, I think, in motorsports. Don't no you, question Brock? about it. Absolutely. That, uh, that uh, seals his fate as a superstar. No question about it. 
But we've got a couple of good guys in here. Kevin Doty, a good runner, and uh, Terry Gray, of course, uh, a good, solid performer uh, from uh, Bartlett, Tennessee, one of the Memphis gang, uh, like Sammy Swindell and Bobby Davis Jr. and Jeff Swindell. So uh, a good bunch of drivers here, as always. You've got to be good to even get into this park, Steve. Absolutely. All right, they're idling around side by side, looking for the green flag and the green lights, and they are going to get it this time out of turn number four. And the California kid, the yellow 15 car, Blake Robertson, he is gone into the lead. In the turbo, a lot of bumping in the back, and now we got trouble on the front stretch. It looks like the 25 car of Steve Brazil maybe got into another car. That caused him to come sliding across the racetrack, and uh, an innocent victim, Richie Gott, in the 4G car got tagged by Brazil, but the red flag is out. They're going to have to remove the wreckage uh, before we can continue here in heat two. Yeah, no uh, problems uh, as far as the drivers are concerned. Steve Brazil and that 25, as you can see, the wheels are hooked together with the four automobile of uh, Ricky Gaunt. I would imagine that they'll be able to get these cars unhooked and back underway, but in the meantime, let's take another look at how this happened. Mid-pack, green flag out. And it's Brazil who gets into J.R. Topper from behind. Apparently uh, hurts the steering on that 25 car because he's sliding down low. And then uh, J Ricky Gaunt trying to get by him on the low side uh, hooks uh, wheels and they slide up onto the infield and uh, no apparent damage. Let's get on to Steve. Well, they're trying to separate a couple of cars down here. Ricky, you got in as an alternate, a little trouble down that front straight. Yeah, I think them guys got into one another and uh, I kind of got tangled up in it. It's just part of the deal, I guess. Will the car be able to restart, do you think? Uh, I don't know. We got some damage there. Uh, it looks like we took out a radius rod in the headers, but you know, we'll try and get back in, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Okay, what we need down here is the world's largest crowbar. As I said in the opening of the show, it's not if you will crash at Knoxville, it's when. And luckily for Richie Gaunt, the damage to that car is essentially minor, and he will race again. But now it's time to restart the field in Heat 2, led by Blake Robertson. But don't count out the number nine car of Rich Bubak in the second position. The 17-year-old in the number yellow 15 car again asserts himself and takes the lead as they thunder down into turn number one. Oh boy, we got a good race for second. That is the 11X of Gary Lee Meyer, the nine car of Rich Bubak out of Dallas, Texas. Those two guys go and at it for the runner-up spot. And look at this. It is Gary Lee Meyer on the outside. He takes that second position away. But coming right back is the nine car. Oh, yeah. Rick Bubeck uh, will not have. Oh, and look at that. The 11X car looks like he is slowing. And we've got problems there with that car. So Bubeck right now has a firm grip on second place. And that automatically gave the seven car Kevin Doty a position. And he's up to where he can challenge the number nine car, Rich Bubeck, for second. Yeah. Bubeck had a firm grip for about 100 yards before Doty came up and got underneath them, and now will take that second spot away from him. So, a good race back here uh, as uh, right now, though, the youngster, Blake Robertson, is unchallenged, still moving out and holding on to a big, long lead here. And here is the white 61 acre Terry Gray. He is going to challenge Bubak for that third spot. He's not satisfied with fourth. He wants third. Terry Gray started seventh, by the way. Pretty he good run. And a good chew, Terry Gray is. So uh, we will hear more from him, I think, as this uh, very intense heat race continues. But right now, it's that yellow 15 car, the Hanford, California driver of uh, Blake Robertson, is slowing, Steve. So we may bring out a caution here. What a tough break for the youngster. He had this race in the bag. Well, something uh, went awry in the drivetrain that unlocked the engine from the rear end. But some good news, because of the two cars that couldn't restart, that means he can still go to the B feature. He's still got a shot, and we have a brand new leader, number seven, Kevin Doty, who started in the third position. He's now running up front, the black number seven. What an unfortunate break for this young man. But he will be back for the B main. He's got another shot at it as the top four drivers out of this second heat will automatically transfer to the A main. But because of retirements, Blake Robinson's got a shot to get back into the B main if they can fix the car. Let's find out how he's doing. Well, Blake, you were the teenage sensation in Knoxville for five laps. What happened? Well, I don't know. Coming out of four, just jumped out of gear. I think it broke the rear end or something. Just bad luck. 
Your crew was hoping to get you back in it, but it's a terminal. Yeah, we, we're kind of low on spare parts this year. We don't have a spare in or nothing, so I think we're done. Great job while it lasted. Thanks. Well, that's a tough, tough break for this youngster, but I'll guarantee you're going to hear more from him, Steve. I concur. The green flag is out one more time, and it is Terry Gray in the 61A car moving right up to challenge a new leader, Kevin Doty in the seven machine. Terry Gray started way back in seventh in this heat, and it's just a couple of car lengths away from leading it. He goes down low, quickest way around. He scrubs up a lot of speed. Yeah, that's uh, Kevin Doty in the black seven uh, holding on right now, but uh, Terry Gray working that low side here in Knoxville, and he will get underneath Kevin Doty to take the lead here as they come off turn number two, and look at Terry Gray stretch it out as they head down the back straight. Let's check on the other transfer spots. In the third spot is number nine, Rich Lubach, 21K. Luke Kennedy is in fourth and fighting for his life as 92 JJR Topper wants that for a spot. Remember, Steve, it was JR that got whacked by uh, Steve Brazil at the start of this deal. So he's been struggling uh, throughout this whole heat. Well, he's real close to being able to salvage something out of it. All he's got to do is move up one more position. And that's going to happen. Number seven, Kevin Doty is slowing. That caused Rich Bubak to have to spike the brakes at 21K Luke Kennedy Jr. In the blue car, he just zoomed right around. But Bubak was only held up a moment. He's back in this thing. Yeah, it gives you an idea how quick these cars react and how uh, what an opportunistic kind of racing this is. There's the white flag. Just a little bobble by Kevin Doty. And they really didn't hold up uh, Bubak at all, but it was enough to let Kennedy by. So heat number two saw three leaders in all, but there's the man who's going to take the checkered flag across the strike. 61A, Terry Gray. He goes directly to the A main and in some very good company. In fact, everybody who finishes this race, as Brock said earlier, due to some attrition, will at least go to the B main. Nobody's uh, going home just yet. And that includes uh, Blake Robertson, the 15 car. Even though he's in the pits broken, if he can beg for or steal the parts to get that thing fixed, he finished enough laps to make it to the B main. Don't have to start at the back there, but at least uh, he's still alive under a full moon. Ooh, a full moon at Knoxville. Get ready, folks. This could get interesting. Terry Gray wins at Luke Kennedy Jr. second. Rich Bubach in the third spot. J.R. Topper all directly to the A main. And as we said, everybody else you see on your screen, with the exception of number nine and 10, will go to the B main here at Knoxville Raceway on a good hot night. The cars are already out on the racetrack for the start of heat number three. Officials here trying to make up a little bit of the time they lost in heat number two. Let's go to Brock. Well, Terry Gray out of the race car. Uh, once uh, Doty broke, uh, you just drove away from everybody. Yeah, this is a brand new J&J, &J, and we've been working on it here for about three nights and trying to get this deal worked out. Seems to be a lot better tonight. Well, she uh, she hooked up real good. Uh, you, once that restart uh, got you kind of settled down you just uh, broke free and uh, no no apparent problems yeah we're still searching on the racetrack right now it's still a little wet on the bottom and it's starting to come in our car's starting to work pretty good for us now good terry go get him thanks okay good job i'll say it's working pretty good terry had a fine drive there you know coming up in heat number three really kind of an interesting mix we've got three australian drivers and two lady drivers in fact one of the lady drivers is one of the australians i talked to her before competition began at the top of the show, I used the word men to describe the drivers. That was inaccurate. A couple of gals in heat number three, including from Australia, Melinda Dumsney. Melinda, we met your husband, Max, a couple of years ago. Who got started first, you or he? Actually, I started first in sprint cars um, through my father, and uh, Max started in TQs. So it was through the sprint cars that we met one another. I overheard you talking to your crew after hot laps. You were not that happy with the car. Um, well, we just went out there in that last hot lap session to experiment with the car. We changed it from Wednesday night, and Wednesday night it felt great, but tonight you don't get another chance. It's do or die tonight, and we just had to experiment, and um, we're going to go back to our last setup. How important is uh, endurance and uh, body strength driving a sprint car? They do have power steering on them. That's correct. They have power steering, and um, that makes it a lot easier, but it does help to be fit and energetic as well. You look plenty fit to me, and good luck to you. Thank you very much. Well, as we know, Steve, uh, sprint car racing is a hot, hot sport in uh, Australia and in New Zealand as well. And Melinda representing her country along with Gary Brazier, who's starting on the pole. He is the current champion down under with these automobiles. And starting in the third spot is Peter Murphy, yet another guy up here from Sydney, New South Wales, to uh, 
run against what is no doubt the best in the business. But these guys, and Melinda as well, really, really are fine, fine competitors. And Melinda's not the only girl in the race, as we said earlier. Lisa French, watch her. She's in the 8L car, starting way back in the 8th position. We got a start. The coming down off the fourth turn and the turn number one, it is Kenny Hansen. The South Dakota driver who drives around Brazier to take the lead. And it's very easy to find the Australian cars out there because they all have an AU attached to their number. And, uh, well, a perfect example of that is Peter Murphy, the 2AU car, who is challenging for the third position right now, trying to get around the 1WK of Kevin Fry. Kevin Fry out of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, in here for the East Coast. What a great representation of drivers from all over the world as Fry sits up there battling for that third spot. Let me tell you, there's no treaty between the Aussie and the American drivers. They just love to beat up on each other, whether they're here or down under. And right now, Peter Murphy trying to hang on to that fourth position because here comes Bob W. Gary Wright all the way up from 10th. He wants it. And he's going to get it, Steve, as Gary Wright down the front straightaway, down the bottom, underneath Murphy to take over that fourth transfer spot. An important pass right there. If uh, Wright can hold on to it, he is headed for the A main. Oh, absolutely. The Aussies putting on a heck of a show. It's a shame they're all grouped into one heat here. It's been nice to see him kind of sprinkle through the program, and that's just the way the draw turned out. Oh, I'll tell you, they are really getting around Knoxville and starting to run higher on the racetrack successfully. This racetrack in perfect condition on a perfect night of racing, low humidity, full moon, clear skies, and this track is running in beautifully. It's going to be a great night for racing all the way through this program. And the green flag continues out here at heat number two. The field pretty well spread out. Let's remember there's an Australian up front leading this thing, too. They'd like to put a stop to that. Uh, the crowd would mind seeing that either. <laughs> Uh, they, they're pretty popular. We've got a lot of Australian fans here. The caution is out. That is Billy Bell in the 17B car. He is parked coming off turn number two. We're seeing either smoke or steam coming off the engine of that car, indicating some serious problems for Billy Bell and crew. Not the least of which is that they are done for the night. Meanwhile, as the field reforms, I think the car to watch is the Aussie 21 AU Gary Brazier. If he can get the car to hook up where he wants it, he could really be dangerous. Kenny Hansen, the 3-H car out front, but look at the Aussie down low, 21 AU, Gary Frazier, the Australian national champion. He wants his lead back. He enjoyed it the first few laps, and he's got it again. And boy, does he have it, Steve. He is moving out on Kenny Hansen. Got about a five-car length lead as they get down into turns three and four, and it looks as if Frazier's just going to drive away from everybody. The car's hooked up. As the white flag flies, he is on his way to a convincing victory. But good race back there for the transfer spot between 2AU Peter Murphy and the number five car at Gary Wright out of Texas. Murphy has made the pass. Peter Murphy, if he can hang on to that fourth position, he will go directly with his teammate, Gary Bisher, to the A main. He has got it. So, Peter Murphy finishes fourth, but this man is your winner. That's Gary Brazier from Sydney, Australia. A hotbed of sprint car racing down under as he is the winner of heat number three, and he did it in really very dominating fashion. You know, if you were making a surf movie and you called Central Castings and said, send me a bronzed Australian surfer, you'd get Gary Brazier. Sure would. As he wins it, Kenny Anson uh, fought him for a while and uh, finishes in second place. Kevin Fry, Peter Murphy in the transfer spot. There are the two women, Melinda Dunsey and uh, Lisa French in seventh and eighth. Larry Webb and Billy Bell, well, they're not going to, they're finished for the night. The rest of them have got a shot in the B main. Well, you made a few bucks, mate, and you're headed for the A main, the way it's supposed to work. Yeah, um, the track worked out pretty good then. I was playing around on the bottom for a while to sort the car out and then once I knew the top was the place to go, that's where I got it. Compare, if you would, let's say your best track down under to Knoxville. Uh, I'd have to say um, Warnerbull or Speedway Park. Um, Warnerbull's my best track because that's, I won the biggest race in my career so far at that racetrack. So. Comparable racetrack to this? Uh, no, all our tracks at home are um, quarter miles and they're sort of your sideways racing and your backer in the corner and stuff. None of this being smooth and keep the car straight stuff. You've adapted well. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Brock? Well, Peter, that was a good Australian show. Uh, you won the thing and you got into the main. Yeah, well, um, that's what we're here to try and do is get into the main and 
see how we go from there. Um, the car was all right, but we can tighten it up a bit more and just see what happens. This your first time at Knoxville? This is my first time at Knoxville. This is my first year racing sprint cars, and I'm just having a good time. So. Off to a good start. Good job. Peter. Thank you. See very, you later. Thank you. Okay. Okay, the heats are complete, and it's time to move into the B feature. And who's on the pole? Why, the California kid, number 15, Blake Robertson. What a run he's having at Knoxville. Brock? Remember now, only two go into the A feature, Steve, so there's a lot of pressure on a whole bunch of these drivers, including uh, Melinda Dumasey and Lisa French, the two young women that are in this field. But starting from the pole will be the 17-year-old sensation from Hanford, California, number 15, Blake Robertson. Obviously, they got the perks to fix the drivetrain in that car. Let's remember, in the heat race, he ran off and hid until it broke. Should be interesting to see what happens again. Of course, he's got some real good competition in here. Right. Well, uh, he was discouraged when you talked to him earlier that they wouldn't be able to find a parts, but that's racing. I'm sure that one of the other crews said, hey, we got a rear end or whatever is broken on that car, and uh, here it is. Go use it and go race the thing. That's, that's pretty common in all kinds of racing. And there's so many California cars here for the first time that they're all kind of pooling their stuff, uh, trying to get the place figured out to make a good showing. Okay, green flag. That is, look at this, the 80 car of Vance Peterson came from third to take the lead from Blake Robertson. Great start by Vance Peterson. That may have just been experience on the part of Peterson. Uh, Robertson, I don't think, was just quite ready for that aggressive start of the B main, and he has fallen back into that second position. And here you see the interval to the race for third between 12X Steve Siegel, 26 Rich Bramer, and 97 Greg Woolley. Now, Woolley's a real runner. Yes, uh, his dad, Gordon Woolley, was one of the finest drivers in the Midwest of the old IMCA sprint car circuit. And uh, certainly Greg is following in the family tradition an excellent race driver. If you're confused as we are, that black car at Greg Woolley, it does say 17 on one side of the wing and 97 on the other. 97 being the correct number as he still tangles with Steve Siegel for that third spot. He's got Siegel on the high side. Well, remember now, it's only two guys that get out of this uh, race and into the A feature. And earlier in the going in the heats, it was four, so he had a little bit better shot. But as we watch the 80 car, that is your leader, Vance Peterson, unchallenged at this point. He appears, if something doesn't break, headed for the A main. But it's going to be a battle between Greg Woolley and Blake Robertson for that second spot. That is the critical point here. And there is Woolley down low in the black car. And Young Robertson holds on to it for a while in the 15 car, but Woolley keeps zipping at him at the low side and will. Does it come down to front straight away? Can Blake Robertson hold him off? So far, so good. Well, Blake holds him off in the straightaways, but not on the turns. There goes Woolley down low, but again on the straightaway, it is Robertson who pulls it out. Boy, this is a terrific race. One driver had me down low, one likely to ride the rim. Halfway through the B feature, six laps to go. And this is the best race of the night for the second spot. Can Woolley finally make it work here? Oh, oh and we've got a yellow flag out. It is trouble for 9M Rick Montgomery and 8L Lisa French. Lisa doesn't have a whole lot of experience and was telling me earlier her biggest fear was to get out there and maybe get mixed up in something and cause a problem. She's really trying to uh, stay away from the other guys and just get a lot more experience in the seat. So it'd be interesting when we have another look at this to see just exactly what did happen between Lisa and Rick Montgomery. Well, there is Rick. He has already spun uh, up in turn number two. And here comes Lisa backwards into the picture. No contact between the two cars. Apparently independent spins, but uh, they both end up in the same place on the racetrack, and that brings out the caution. Both cars will be pushed up immediately and join up at the back of the field. Their hopes of making tonight's A feature pretty much over. Now, here are the leaders as we get ready to restart the B feature. Number 80, Vance Peterson leads it. Blake Robinson in the number 15 holds down the transfer spot with Greg Woolley, Rich Bramer, and Steve Siegel rounding out the top five. And there you can see the sixth through tenth, but don't worry about any of them. you got to finish first or second if you're to go to the A feature tonight, and right now that is Peterson and Robertson holding those two transfer positions. Starters saying this time around, boys, we're going to get it on the back stretch. And it's a lot safer back there on the restart, right, Brock? Well, it is. Uh, the... Uh Normally, they'll start the heats uh, coming off turn number four, but the restarts on the back straight, and there it is. Hammer down, 
And look at this. Robertson instantly challenges Van Peterson down low. Let's see if Peterson can hold him off in the yellow 80 car. Yes, he does. More power on the part of Peterson. But look at this. Young Robertson comes right back at him as they come off turn number two. And look at that horsepower. Peterson almost nicked Robertson as they got uh, down the back straightaway and get way up high. But, boy, I'll tell you what, the kid from California is really showing some skills here. I have to tell you, his car control for his age is absolutely unbelievable. He's only been in these cars. Whoa, and all of a sudden, Robertson slows dramatically, and Vance Peterson in the 80 car streaks away. There is something wrong, Rob, with that 15 car. There has to be. He's just fading. He's been passed by Greg Woolley, which cost him his transfer spot, and he is struggling right now to maintain third. Yeah, there's definitely mechanical problems of some kind or another in the car, and believe me, just a wink, a quarter of a second in differential and lap times can uh, put you way back in the field here. These cars are so competitive. Well, Blake seems to still have enough power and handling to hold up the rest of the field, but to catch Greg Woolley or Vance Peterson for a transfer spot, he needs a yellow flag at bare minimum. What he really needs is for something to go wrong with one of them. Well, I don't know. This 17 car, Daryl Hannisman, who started this pack, is really on our run here. He is uh, moving in on uh, Robertson, and there's a question, I would think, of whether or not the youngster can hold him off, because uh, definitely the car is slowing up a little bit. Ooh, you just saw the 5W car. Gary Wright running six all over the racetrack. In fact, he held up Rich Bramer a bit there. He's probably had a tire go uh, away on the crack. I don't know, but he almost collected Bramer uh, in that little uh, bit of action there. That is the 80 car year leader, and he is just rolling around this racetrack. Vance Peterson, a uh, fine driver from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, takes a white flag, and he is headed for the A feature, presuming that uh, the race car holds together, and right now he can almost coast in. He's got such a big lead. That's right, Greg Woolley, number 97. Uh, he is happy with second place. He's right now just kind of defending that turf, not wanting to make uh, any mistakes that could cost him the transfer to the A main. And even though they'll uh, not in the best starting position, the A main, in fact, they'll be back towards the back. They'll still make more money. And they've come a long ways for that purpose. There is a big payday here in all these races, comparatively speaking. Most of the heat races at a normal outlaw show or uh, a sprint car show doesn't pay a whole lot. But here in this Knoxville uh, arena, everything brings home some bucks. So Peterson, Woolley in the top two transfer spots. And Blake Robertson with uh, his performance probably has a lot of kids in the grandstands begging their dad for a mini sprint car. In the uh, fourth and fifth spot was Hanstead and Siegel, Wright, Bramer, Twit, Hall, and Ishinar round out the top ten. Right now, let's go to Brock with the winner, a most impressive drive. Well, Vance, that's got to be the way you like to win them uh, with no real challenge. <clears throat> Race car looked hooked up and like it was running just fine. Yeah, we got a, we got a real good start, and uh, the thing worked perfect. It drove real easy and uh, just hung up there on the cushion and rode around. Guys are loading up the fuel and uh, probably making some uh, bar changes, and you'll be you going to do anything else to get it ready for the main? Uh, we'll just probably put new rubber on it again and uh, hope, uh, hope everything works out for the Action Carrier Sprinter. All right, well, go get them. Thank you. Okay, Appreciate it. Sure. Okay, Steve? Well, Blake, you almost had a little bit of a reprieve there. Yeah, I think we got a little bit too much stagger. I couldn't get it up there against the wall. Really wanted to run the top, but I, it, I, just, I couldn't get it up there next to the wall, so I guess I just had to do a third. Your dad seems to think in the heat race when you broke the drive shaft, maybe the engine over and the valve springs might be shot. Yeah, it, it, it did get up there in the RPMs. Uh, we, I, I, we really didn't have enough time to tell him because we didn't have a spare in and we had to change it and everything else. So you got a lot of big track experience here at Knoxville. Yeah, we're real happy to be here. We're happy to talk to you, my friend. Good luck in the future. Thank you. We are now ready for the big money race of the night, the A feature of the Friday program here at Knoxville. And it truly is an international field, Brock. It is indeed, and uh, we've got our heat winners, of course, in here. Starting on the outside of the front row, Gary Brazier won heat number three. Right behind him uh, is Dennis Moore, who was the fifth heat winner. Then Johnny Mackison right behind him, and Paul McMahon starts seventh. But uh, Terry Gray, because of a poor qualifying time, remember he won the second heat. He's going to start way back in the 18th spot. And uh, also Bobby Allen's way back there. He's back there in 17th place. So a couple of strong runners. Uh, from the outlaw circuit way in the back. 
Starting 21st and 22nd in the scratch position are uh, Vance Peterson and Craig Woolley. They were finished 1 2 in the uh, B main, the consolation, as it were, which uh, got him into this race. But I'll tell you what, if they're going to be factors in this thing, they got to get a super start and run like uh, uh, Steve Kinzer on his best night, Steve. Absolutely. Now, this is the longest race of the night at 20 laps on the big half mile here at the Knoxville Fairgrounds. Oh, everybody formed up. Pretty picture of uh, great uh, two by two field coming down off turn number three through turn four. And they are going to get a green. And look at the Aussie, Gary Brazier from outside of the front row. He immediately moves around and in front of number 63, Rusty McClure, who started on the pole. The young Aussie quickly asserting himself and trying to make a big play from the back. Oh, and I was just going to say, Vance Peterson trying to come from that next to the last spot, and he made up a bunch of them, but he got tangled up here, and we've got a couple of cars in trouble. Vance Peterson and Bobby Burroughs, the 52U car. And of course, uh, Burroughs has taken the worst of it here. Look at this machine. It is upside down. The wing pretty well crinkled. Uh, it was not a particularly high speed crash, and I would think that both drivers should be okay. All right, let's let's take another look at it now uh, as they come off turn number two on the opening lap. That is Peterson down low on the right side of your screen, off to the left, off screen. Bobby Burroughs has already gotten out of control, and everybody's scrambling for position. Peterson gets up against uh, Bobby Allen in the 1A, tangles him. He starts to spin. There you see Burroughs tumbling upside down as Peterson and Burroughs get together. Uh, the 80 car uh, spins to a stop and Burroughs upside down, but apparently unhurt. These cars are amazingly strong, and of course the wings cushion the impact, so apparently Bobby Burroughs all right, and Steve is going to try to get to him. Bobby, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Those things happen so quickly, it's hard sometimes to tell exactly what did happen. I just got a little loose and got around, got tapped, and went over real easy. Most important race of the night, not unexpected to happen in turns one or two. No, not at all. Racing thing. Car is pretty beat up. Uh, I don't think it's too bad. It went over pretty easy. The wings, they, they really saved the car and you. Yeah, yeah, it went over real easy, so I'm fine. Okay, well, let's get back to your crew. All right, Vance Peterson being pushed off, he's okay. But immediately the crew goes to work on the 52U car of Bobby Burroughs. It is a testament to just how durable today's sprint cars are that the bent up ragged wing on that machine is quickly removed and a new one installed. The crew obviously will not have time to check the suspension or make any adjustments on the chassis, but they don't feel that the car went over hard enough to need to do any of that. He's now been bump started back out onto the racetrack. So everyone restarts from the incident on the opening lap of take one of the AV2. Now it's time for take number two. We tried again still 20 laps of racing to go. And that's why everybody always brings a couple of wings to a sprint car race. They absorb an enormous amount of punishment and as you said, uh, help the drivers walk away from these things, but more so keep the chassis in good shape so the chassis don't take any kind of punishment. So. We're ready for a restart, and Bobby Burroughs back in a scratch position in that 52 car with a fresh wing on top. Well, uh, we'll be watching, I think, the back of the pack as well as the front here in this restart to see if uh, history repeats itself. A lot of good driving going on there. Even though the big money's on the line, the guys at the back using their head and not pushing too hard. Great driving, gentlemen, up at the front. It's all Australia. Absolutely, the Australian champion Gary Brazier holding on to that lead convincingly behind him. Rusty McClure in the 63, but a good battle for third between uh, Kenny Hansen in the 3H and the 65 car, Johnny Mackinson. And meanwhile, in the back, let's check in on 1A Bobby Allen. Here you see him dice with 61A Terry Gray, 3H Greg Hodnett for the 17th position. Remember, Gray and Bobby Allen were involved in that initial incident, but that don't appear to have suffered from it. But Bobby Allen, Brock, just really isn't making much progress. No, he's not. Uh, he just, uh, that car is not hooked up. It's not doing what he wanted to do. Remember, he was complaining a little bit about it. He said that uh, it was about time to get a new car, and I think maybe that thing's headed for the scrap heap, or at least uh, out back behind his Hanover, Pennsylvania shop for a while, uh, because it's just not working the way Bobby likes it to right now. And here setting his sights on Bobby Allen is the 97 black car that looks like number 17. That, of course, is Greg Woolley, and he blows right 
by Bobby Allen. Ooh, Allen, that's an embarrassment to a guy like Allen. There's your leader, the 21 car. That's a gambler chassis, of course, a very popular chassis that Gary Brazier is using. J&J's, Maxim's, uh, we have a lot of different types of chassis in here, but uh, surely the most popular are the, the gamblers, the Maxim's, and the J&J's. But we got a caution right now, Steve. We do. It's not a big deal unless, of course, you're Australian Peter Murphy in the 2A hoop car. He has stopped out on the racetrack. He started ninth in the A feature here. Uh, and they're going to attempt to restart him. He might have just looped it up against the fence there. But if the engine uh, isn't bulky, he could rejoin this A main. And uh, his countryman, of course, Gary Brazier in the 21A U car, he's having uh, a lot better fortune. In fact, he's still leading this thing. There you see the push truck uh, behind Peter uh, to attempt to bump start that car. And they've got a bit of time because the pace car is still out on the racetrack, circling uh, this field of cars around the famous old half mile here in Knoxville. But of course, the fans here, a lot of them, well, they always root for Scruffy, Bobby Allen, the original outlaw, whatever you want to call him. But he is languishing at the back of the pack in that blue 1A car. With five laps down and 15 to go, let's show you the standings here in the A main. Up front, of course, with a great start is a 21 AU car of Gary Brazier from Australia. Kenny Hansen, the three HK, then Rusty McClure, Johnny Mackinson Jr., and Paul McMahon. That's the top five. Six through ten, well, it looks just like this. Cameron, the second, uh, Mike Peters, uh, Dennis Moore Jr., Kenny Krautheim, the second. Boy, a lot of second-generation drivers. And Greg Hodnett, he rounds out the top ten. <laughs> Well, you notice, know, Steve, uh, three out of the last five cars are carrying number threes on their tails. There's Cameron with a three C, uh, Crowdheim with a three K, Hodnett with a three H, which uh, is a bit of a scoring nightmare uh, for the people that uh, keep track of that sort of things up in the booth, but uh, uh, the little letters after them help them out. But uh, these cars are running around here so hard and so fast and uh, with also many different uh, new combinations of numbers that uh, it's amazing that there aren't more scoring disputes. But the people here at Knoxville do a super job. And uh, generally speaking, not a whole lot of arguing about that sort of thing. Number three, car three, HK running in the second spot. So I think if I had my choice of a sprint car number, I'd want number 33, right? Well, Double up on your number scratching idea. You know, poor old Bobby Allen, he's still kind of back there, not able to move the old car, maybe a little too old, as he told you earlier. But boy, we were here on a hot Saturday night Two years ago, the Knoxville Nationals, the biggest, richest sprint car race of them all, and it was quite a different story. Sure was. Bobby Allen, uh, running that low groove as usual, ran around, or I should say underneath Sammy Swindell, who had oiling problems late in the race to win his only Knoxville Nationals. And that paid him $50,000. He's not going to get anywhere close to that tonight, not even if he goes to the front. But uh, we're very close to a green flag start as the winged outlaw sprinters circle around. The starter says, okay, boys, when you get to the bag stretch, be alert, because that's when we're going to get the A main underway for the third time tonight. And uh, as you said, uh, Brazier continues to lead it, but uh, Kenny Hansen out of uh, South Dakota, well, he's right in there behind him, and we've got a green down the back straightaway. Oh boy, do we. The Aussie, Gary Brazier, again, leads the restart. But Kenny Hansen, the guy you were just talking about, the free HK car, he is going to pass right up into the second position. Oh, look at this. There's the three car. That is Kenny Hansen. Just blows by a couple of guys down the back straightaway. There's Bobby Allen. Uh, he's trying to get around some people, but uh, having some problems. That's Vance Peterson. Remember him? He had the problem in the 80 car. Bobby Allen, as usual, staying down low. Boy, he loves that low groove. And right now, he's making a move on 3H. Greg Hodnett, but just doesn't have quite enough. Hodnett, uh, the car gets a bit wide, and now that's right in front. Allen cuts him off. Yes, he yeah, did indeed, but uh, Hodnett holds on to it. And Bobby Allen apparently just doesn't have either the horsepower or the handling to get up amongst them tonight. But this track may be coming to him a bit. Look at this, Bobby Allen. He is going to pass the 3H car, the white car, Greg Hodnett. He is now all the way up to 19. Well, here comes uh, Allen, continues to kind of poke his way through the field. That is the 80 car of Vance Peterson up high. 
again with need I tell you Allen down low uh, on the bottom and gets by Peterson so uh, he nips away at him and there's the 21 K of Luke Kennedy uh, he's got him in his sights. You saw that dirt kick right up into the camera. Well that cameraman not only wears goggles he wears a catcher's chest protector. Makes no chance. Well I'll tell you what this racetrack is absolutely superb as far as the conditioning is concerned. It's flat it's smooth but it's giving great traction and believe me these giant right rear tires that these 700 plus horsepower cars carry they'll chew a hole in a racetrack uh, in instant. Uh, so that the people that have prepared this Knoxville service tonight have done a great job. That's right. And don't expect uh, your local dirt track to be quite like this. It's very, very expensive. They have the crowd base here to support everything that they do. Now the leader back up front, 21 AU Gary Brazier. Well, let's find out how good he really is. He's starting to get into some lap traffic, and that can make the difference between a win or a loss. If you've got the talent to use those lappers to your advantage, to position yourself just perfectly, and so far, he looks real good at it. Oh, he's doing a fine job working his way through the slower cars, and that's where it can get tricky, because uh, if you get bottled up, uh, it will give a guy like a Kenny Hansen, who's right behind him, uh, the just the opportunity he's looking for. All right, we just saw Bobby Allen there. He's had a little bit of progress, not moving decisively, but he's up in the 15th spot. He's got a long way to go as the green stays out and Bobby Allen stays down low as usual, working his way, trying to uh, move up through the field, uh, make a few bucks, hopefully, to get himself that new Jesse. Talk about it, or at least get a paint job on the old 1A, Steve. That's right, paint is not that big in Bobby's world. All right, back up to the leader, and the traffic has slowed the pace of 21 AU Gary Brazier just a little bit. And Kevin Hansen running second in the 3HK car. That may make it possible for him to get up there and make some kind of a race out of these final laps. There we see Brazier trying to put the, the 80 car of Peterson down a lap and has a little trouble doing that. I'll tell you, Brock, Kenny Hansen is trying to make something out of this deal. He is uh, using the lappers to his advantage Maybe better than Brazier is right now. Well, uh, Brazier's uh, occupied up front with trying to uh, run down uh, Peterson and started way at the back. Remember, had that spin and uh, is uh, well back in the field at this point. But uh, right now, Peterson running real good. Oh, that's right. Had he not had trouble, uh, he could have been a factor in this thing, even though he started so far back. Well, look at Hansen come up. Hansen trying to make that move on the leader here and uh, doing a pretty decent job of it. You bet he is. The crowd is getting into this one. The three H car, Kenny Hansen, really giving Brazier everything he can handle. In back, right there, he takes the lead. He does indeed. Off turn number two, Kenny Hansen on the bottom comes down, but Brazier comes right back on the high side, and they almost touch through turn three and four. And Brazier just muscles his way past into the lead again. I think Hansen cut Brazier napping a little bit. There's no rear view mirrors on these cars. Look at this. He's back at it again. Absolutely. I think Hansen uh, also took advantage of uh, Brazier kind of battling it out with 80 Vance Peterson as a lap car and uh, moved right up on Brazier. But uh, right now Brazier uh, turned up the wick a little bit and the white flag is out and he's moved away a little bit. But Kenny Hansen is not giving up. Well, you'll notice Brazier didn't take a high line there. He stayed right in the middle of the racetrack to protect his turf. And now the Aussie is really on the gas. I'll tell you, they found a sport they can beat us at besides sailing here. <laughs> so there is your winner, Gary Brazier from Sydney, Australia, after a valiant effort on the part of Kenny Hansen. That is Bobby Allen right down there, who has to settle for 10th place tonight. Not a particularly good night for this truck. A lot better than 19th, where we saw him that many laps ago. The track must have started to come to him just a little bit. But there is Gary Brazier, the 21 AU car. They spend a lot of money to bring their crews and their equipment over here, and they deserve to not be hit on the victory lap. Well, that was Bobby Burroughs. I think he was just a little out of control. He wasn't trying to ram him. No. No, no international incident there. <laughs> Well, that is uh, your second place car, the 3H of uh, Kenny Hansen rolling by, but a little bit late, Kenny, because it's Gary Brazier's going to take home the bucks tonight. And Brock, I'll tell you, the Aussies are very well liked here in the States. And I'm told by our drivers who have gone down there that they're treated like kings and try to return the favor. As for 1A Bobby Allen, well, he put on a bit of a late charge and manages to finish 10th. Still not what he would call a great evening. So as the final results show, 
Australian Gary Brazier takes home the lion chair in the Friday night A feature here at Knoxville. But not without a good fight from Kenny Hansen, Paul McMahon, Mike Peters, Johnny Mackinson Jr. round out the top five. An excellent show on the part of all of them. Lenny Krautheim, Greg Woolley, Gary Cameron the second, Terry Gray, and Bobby Allen in the tenth spot. And rounding out the top 15, we have Dennis Moore Jr., Don Droud Jr., Chris Icard, Kevin Fry, and Bobby Burrow. Remember, it was Bobby Burrow who rolled it on the opening lap, got a new wing, came back, and uh, drove up to 15th spot. And now let's go down to Steve with the winner. Well, the man from down under has turned Knoxville upside down. Gary, that was a thrilling drive. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, it was tough out there. Uh, it was hard to run around the top when you had lap cars, and um, we got there. Staying high work for you. The three car would close in and out of the turns, you'd rock it away. Yeah, it was. Um, I was finding it difficult. My car was starting to hit the um, high line, the cushion, uh, pretty hard, and it was bouncing me over towards the fence, and we got there. You indeed got there. Congratulations. Thank you. Former Australian national champion, a winner here tonight at Knoxville. Brock? Kenny, good payday, huh? Yeah, it wasn't too bad tonight. Uh, racetrack seemed to run in real well, and uh, you seem to be able to work both high and low. Yeah, I just, I had to give it a chance anyway up on top. It was fast on the bottom. So I thought, well, I'll try it on the top and just see how it works, and it worked real good up there too. So just lap cars got in the way for a little bit, and we did all right, I think. <laughs> oh, you did good. Uh, the only, uh, you didn't get a whole lot of yellows after you, after that one red and, uh, you know, a couple of early ones, but uh, then you didn't really, once he broke loose, you didn't really have a chance to catch him up in, uh, in any kind of yellows, slowdowns. Yeah, it seems like on yellow flag tires take a little bit to warm back up and and to smooth yourself out so you ain't jerking the car around. And, and uh, otherwise, it, it went real good. Sure did. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Steve? Well, Bobby, all in all, I think you uh, showed these youngsters that the original outlaw still has a lot of fight in him. Yeah, I was, I was all right. I just a little bit off. I was, I was, I was happy. Dealing with traffic, a uh, bit of a problem for everybody out there. Yeah, it was traffic and what there was, there was slime on the bottom. It was making them scoot across the racetrack and uh, just a few different things, but it was all right. We enjoyed watching it. Thank you all. I hate that slime on the bottom. Nothing worse. All right, forming up is the annual Race of States, 20 laps of competition, cars representing 21 states and two foreign countries. Up front, the 3B car of Jerry Reicher Jr. from Minnesota, 52U of Bobby Burroughs from Washington, Kevin Feeney, the 6K car from Michigan, number eight, Craig Keel out of New York, Pennsylvania, Nebraska, Maryland, Missouri, Arizona, New South Wales and Australia, represented by Max Dunphy. And we have a dream for the race of states. A much look forward to event every year here at the Knoxville Nationals. 3B, Jerry Richard Jr., 52U, Bobby Burroughs take the lead on the back stretch. And here comes number 77, Stevie Smith, representing Pennsylvania to challenge 52U. Bobby Burroughs for that second spot. Stevie Smith in the red, 77 car, and he's around Bobby Burroughs for a second. Burroughs now being challenged by number eight, Craig Keel. Keel in the gray car from New York, Bobby Burroughs out of Washington State, Spokane to be exact. And up front, there's a challenge for the lead. On the outside goes the red, number 77 car, Stevie Smith has passed 3B Jerry Richard Jr. for the lead. Bobby Burroughs, 52U, he's being challenged for fourth by number five, Daniel Lasaki, but back up front, the leader, Stevie Smith, in 77, 3B Jerry Richard Jr. are leaving the pack. They have just driven away, having a match race of their own. So far, Richard Jr. not able to catch Stevie Smith, Pennsylvania, just driving away with this one. Back in that third position, number five, Danny Lasowski, trying to get right up on the third part of the ring, Craig Keel. Now here is 7C, Dave Blaney, challenging 61 8 Green Green for the fifth spot. There is action all over the racetrack. Blaney has moved up from 21st here, and now he is in the fifth spot. He executes that pass around 61 Green Green. He's got that fifth position. Tremendous action. Some of the best action of the weekend is here in the Race of States competition. Everybody having lots of fun for lots of money. Uh oh The leader, number 77, Stevie Smith, has spun. He recovers but falls way, way back. What an artful piece of driving that was. 
He got into trouble on his own, and he got out of it on his own. But he lost a whole lot of ground doing it. The caution is out, and I think that was uh, just a reflex action on the part of the officials. They knew something bad had to happen. Steve E. Smith went into that spin, but actually the track got fairly clean. The pace truck back out there to get things organized one more time. And Stevie was definitely having his way for the boys here in the race of states. Let's have one more look at what happened. Pretty simple. Doesn't need a lot of analysis. He just got in to turn number two. Too darn hot. Lost control of the thing. Did a great job of car control to keep from hitting anybody else over the wall. Catches it up and is back in the hunt, but lost an awful lot of ground. Be very difficult for him uh, to make that up and retake the lead in the laps that are remaining. But who knows? He's an awfully good young driver, maybe one of the best in the country. But at this point, Danny Lasoski, the five car, was the new leader, followed by 3B Jerry Richard Jr., number eight, Craig Keel. And before it was all over, here comes Dave Blaney, the 7C car. He got around. And it really doesn't matter because 77 Stevie Smith, who was responsible for the caution, moves to the back of the pack. We'll just have to see how he can do from there. But as far as winning it, well, that's pretty well impossible now. But we're ready for a restart of the race of states here in Knoxville. It is 3B Jerry Richard Jr., number five, Danny Lasoski, number eight, Craig Keel, seven seed, Dave Blaney, all up there fighting to control this race. And there on the high side goes number five, Danny Lasoski, past Jerry Richard Jr. And meanwhile, Dave Blaney is around Craig Keel for the third position. Now the red 3B car, Jerry Richard Jr., he is in second, but Blaney in that 7C car, he winds the position. Good, good racing here at Knoxville in the race of state, and he has got it. Jerry Richard, he is now immediately under pressure by 55, the Aussie, Max Dumsley, and 61A, Terry Gray for that third position. Ryan Jr. is able to keep the low groove, and so far is hanging on to third, but just barely. The Aussies, like 55, Max Dumsney in their homeland, they run on very short tracks. It takes them a little while to adapt to a big half mile like this, but once they get the setup, boy, they are brave. And Dumsney is really trying to take that position away from Terry Richard Jr. 61A, Terry Gray, he'd like to be in that third spot also. But so far, Richard's able to keep that low groove and hang on to that position. Number eight, Craig Keel, he's up there as well to challenge 55, Max Dumsney for that fourth spot. Things starting to settle down just a little bit here. One thing they all have, and I'm sure they're grateful for it, is almost a perfect racetrack. No holes, no craters, no pits. A little bit of a blue groove developing, but not much at all. You can run high, you can run low, you can even run in the middle. That's what makes Knoxville so famous and so well liked by the fans here in the grandstand. Uh, Jerry Richard Jr., that three car, 3B, staying down as low as he possibly can now. Sweeps up a little bit high in turns one and two, and then tries to get back down on the pole in three and four. The story now, I guess, would be number eight, Craig Keel, the New Yorker, as he is starting to move up. In fact, I'm sure 55 Max Dumsday could probably hear him or at least feel his presence right there. This is by far the best race on this half mile right now is for that fourth position between Keel and the eight car, Dumsday in the 55 car. Keel whittling it away at him, man. He's got him. Craig Keel gets by Max W. Report that goes right by Jerry Richard Jr. in the 3B car for the third position while he's at it. A two for one for Craig Keel. Meanwhile, what has now become the battle for fourth is the 3B car of Jerry Richard Jr. and 55 Max Dumsney. So it's Richard Jr. Who's being picked on here. That's Iazzi who tries to get around him and so far cannot do it. The three car hanging in there. Jerry Richard Jr., who's from Minnesota and started on the pole, doesn't want to be pushed back any further in this competition, especially by that Australian in the 55 car, Max Dumsey, but he may not have any choice in the matter. Dumsey down low. Dumsey had to hit the brakes to keep from tangling with the three car. That could have been a nasty one. Dumsey uh, tempers his aggression a little bit there, and uh, it's a good thing for the three car he did, because he could have been blindsided. All right, meanwhile, here's the leader number five, Danny Lasowski, looking like he's home free. Car running clean, the engine just purring. These are high gear only cars making almost 800 horsepower. And Lasowski using it all here at Knoxville tonight on a picture perfect racetrack. Now back in the fourth position, 55 Max Dumney has got 3B Jerry Richard Jr. up high. And there he goes, cycling right around Richard. So Richard has now been pushed back yet another position. But it is not over yet. Richard's just made him mad, I think. Now, Richard's going down low, trying to get back underneath Dumsday. He scrubs off so much speed, though, down low like that. He may not be able to do it. Whoa! 
What a nice move. High to low, then back to high again as Jerry Richards Jr. has retaken his position from 55 Max Dummy. A whole lot of lap traffic now, and this will have to get their attention. This is where you find out who the truly smart sprint car drivers are, who can drive maybe two, even three cars ahead of themselves and use the lap traffic to set up a pass. Jerry Dumsey Jr. and Max Dumsey, they are still the best story on the racetrack. Dumsey has again passed Jerry Richards Jr., the three B car for that fourth position. Richards has got to hope this passing stuff is all over with, but I have to wonder, they're showing him no respect because now it's the 61A car right there who goes right by 3B Jerry Richards, pushes him back to fifth, so now it's Terry Gray in that fourth position. For the final time, the leader, Danny Lasaski comes out of turn four. Danny Lasaski wins the race of states for Missouri. And Danny started back in the eighth position, pretty good drive for him. But how about Dave Blaney? He will finish second in the 7C car representing Ohio. Starting clear back at 21st. Frank Keel is third in the 8th car representing New York. He started fourth. And how about Stevie Smith in the 77 car? He started fifth. Then you'll recall the spin that brought out the yellow. They put him at the back of the pack. And he still salvaged a fourth place finisher in the race of states. In fifth, the four-in car of Terry Shepard from Maryland. 55, Max Dumsney, Australia. 61A, Terry Gray in seventh, and Jerry Richard Jr., the 3B card, they beat him up all the way back into the eighth spot. All right, the grid is formed, and we are now ready for the mystery race. How do you get into the mystery race, you ask? That's why it's called the mystery race. Nobody is really sure. I can tell you that on the pole will be the 22 car of Jeff Swindell, Memphis, Tennessee. 5T, Jamie Moyle alongside him, 6M, Tim Munz, and 21R, Fred Raymer in the fourth spot. And the green is out for the mystery race. Jeff Swindell, the 22 car, immediately goes to the front. Actually started up front, followed by the 5T car of Jamie Moyle. Jamie Moyle, another of the Australian contingent. There are a total of, I believe, four drivers from Australia, including one female driver. In fact, the uh, wife of Max Dusty is in competition here at Knoxville this weekend. And the Aussies are really a threat anywhere they go in the world because dirt track racing is by no means new down there. It was going on before World War II, afterwards, and to this day. With not only uh, sprint cars, but also midgets. In fact, Australia and New Zealand might have been more than in both countries. And every weekend, everybody races something. Whether it's a horse, a sailboat, a little formula car, a sprint car, everybody's involved in some kind of competition, either animal or machine. It doesn't really much matter. And here comes the 6M car. That is Tim Monson to Challenge 5T, Jamie Moyle for that second position. 6M, Tim Monson, that's the maroon car down low. You can see he scrubbed up a lot of speed and uh, just the side of him woke up. Jamie Mayo, the 5T car strikes away. So Monson unable to execute there. As if, watch, we will interval all the way back to the 8th position where you'll see the 8T car, Brooke Tatnell, the 11K Steve Kim, and 39 Bob White all right in there. In fact, 11K Steve Kent is making a move on the 18 car of Brooke Tatnell for the eighth position and has got him. So Kent is now eighth, Brooke Tatnell is ninth. And also moving up is one of the real veterans in this sport, 17W Kenny Jacobs, currently in the 11th position. There we saw Kenny. Kenny Jacobs moving up on 39 Bob White and 18 Brooke Tatnell. And he is around for the ninth position. Kenny Jacobs moving through this pack. Don't be surprised if he gets all the way to the front. He's that kind of a driver on a hot night in Knoxville, Iowa. Back to the leader, number 22, Jeff Swindell. New in this car, but seemingly unchallengeable here. What a nice, not his debut, but his first really important competition with this team. And 22, Jeff Swindell is showing the talents that he's long possessed. Of course, the brother of uh, former outlaw king, Sammy Swindell. Jeff Swindell, a good guy, always a big help to us at Diamond P anytime we go to the sprint car races. Occasionally, as these cars are circling around the racetrack, you'll see bits of cellophane kind of flying in the lights. So you saw some off to the right. Well, they're the tearaways. They have layers of goggles, and when uh, one gets too muddy to really see well out of, they tear it away, and it just goes up into the atmosphere. So Jess Wendell, with a great start, he remains up front. But a darn good kind of three-car break is going on. Back for that seventh position. The 11K car is Steve Kent. The $12 sign car of Shane Cars, driver and promoter of Oklahoma City. And Kenny Jacobs, a 17W car. He is in the ninth spot. And look at this. It is Jacobs getting real aggressive in the 17W. 
as he's putting a lot of pressure on Shane Carson for that eighth spot. There's Shane Carson, kind of in the middle there in that 12 car, with Kenny Jacobs behind him and 11K Steve Kent in front of him. Kenny Jacobs now tries Shane on the inside. Shane is able to hold him off, but for how long? Oh, there goes Jacobs, right by Shane Carson for that eighth position, and now coming up on the 11K car of Steve Kent. But for Kenny Jacobs, that 17W car, moving up much more than he has already is going to get mighty difficult because the cars in front of him have a pretty good lead on him. The more you pass, the harder they get to pass. The quicker cars obviously run up front. The guys that have found the setup have got the power and have the good starting positions. Back to the leader in traffic, number 22, Jeff Swindell. That's A1. Joey Allen, the younger brother of Bobby Allen, who drives the 1A car. They travel together and they race together a great deal. There is Jeff Swindell being very careful. He does not want to even nick this car. As I said before, he's brand new in this team and he's making a first rate impression here right now. The car just a little bit loose. You saw up high where uh, there's an awful lot of loose dirt. The car just kind of wiggling around. And that's where a driver has to be careful to not oversteer it. Just maybe let it have its way a bit. You can see him plant that. Woo! And we have got a smoker out on this racetrack, which has brought the caution out. It is 2D Danny Smith. He blew an engine and blew it big time. Often a yellow flag won't even come out for a blown motor like this, but he is in jeopardy out on that racetrack, did not get it down on the apron or anywhere near the pits. So we'll have the yellow out for just a moment or two. And remember, yellow flags do not count in sprint car racing. 20 laps of green here in the mystery feature. And speaking of green, it is out again. The yellow has bunched up all the front runners, which uh, could mean trouble for 22, Jeff Swindell. The mystery race once again underway. Swindell goes way high to get around the lap car of 21, Jack Hewitt, and passes him comfortably. On the restart, the 23 S car of Frankie Kerr got around the 5 P car of Jamie Moyle for a second position, but on the front straightaway, Jamie Moyle has gotten it back. The 5T car in the second position, but also with a great restart was Jeff Swindell. Swindell just absolutely long gone and is right now coming out of the far turn and will take the white flag signifying one lap to go. Could be a nice payday and a great introduction for a new driver to a new team. Headed down into turn three, Jeff Swindell on the outside of the blue 22 car. Just kind of stroking it, trying to stay out of trouble, not make a stupid mistake, or uh, maybe have a lap car get in his way. Good, clean drive for Jeff Swindell as he wins the mystery race at Knoxville. Finishing in the number two spot, the Aussie, Jamie Moyle, the 5T car. We had a great late race battle with 23S Frankie Kerr. Kerr in the third spot, 21R Fred Raymer in fourth, 7TW Kenny Jacobs in fifth, Tim Monson, the 6M car in sixth, and Dave Westerkamp, the 7R in seventh. In the wild world of wing sprint cars, nothing compares to the Napa Knoxville Nationals in Knoxville, Iowa. More cars, more stars, more money, more fans than any other event in the sport. For the 32nd running, 168 racers from 40 states and three countries, $332,000 in prize money, 75,000 fans over four jam-up nights. We were last here in 1990 and watched the original outlaw, Bobby Allen, win his first Knoxville in the blue 1A car. Allen is kind of like Richard Petty. Nobody roots against him. He truly is a legend. But the legend is in trouble tonight. He missed the track setup and only made tonight's final program with a 10th place finish in last night's consolation. Bobby must battle his way through the C and B mains just to get another shot at Knoxville glory. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Evans and welcome to our Knoxville Nationals coverage. I know how excited I am about tonight. Can you imagine how this man must feel? Steve Kinzer going for eight. Unbelievable. Well, uh, I'd like to pull it off, I can tell you that. Uh... Uh, it is exciting. Uh, we've had a good, uh, a good year with a lot of tough competition this year, and and here we are back here at Knoxville again. A guy that wants uh, everybody wants to win this race. You race maybe 150 nights a year, but the magic is still here. The crowd, the money, the television, for that matter. Well, it's all here. This is it. Uh, this is, seems where uh, 
all the people want to spend their vacation and uh, they put 30, 40, 50. I don't know how many people's here, but there's there's a, a great number of people here and uh, she's a full house. And let's hope uh, when the checkers there, uh, we're in the winter circle. We'll be riding with you. Good luck. All right, thank you, Steve. You know, there's a lot of people here that hope maybe this will turn out to be a two-car duel. This man and the guy Brock Yates is with. Well, Steve, I'm with Sammy Swindell, and you're absolutely right. This is one of the great rivals reasons sport, he and uh, Steve Kinzer. And the interesting part about this deal is this year, they've gone head-to-head -head in two major money races, one at Lernerville, uh, Pennsylvania, and the other at Kings Royal and Eldora, uh, Ohio. And you won both of those head-to-head -head against Kinzer. And I think that uh, you said you both came out of the fourth row where you're going to start tonight. Is that correct? Well, yeah, it's the same spot. You know, we've uh, seemed to... Won, we've won quite a few races from the fourth row. Maybe it's my lucky spot or something, but uh, the car's been working real well. Uh, you know, we've just been concentrating on racing here for the last few months, so we haven't done anything different. You know, we've been uh, always trying to develop new things, doing things a little bit different, or trying to learn something to be faster. But right now, you know, the last couple months has just been out there racing, trying to win every time. Well, we're sure looking forward to a great race, Sammy, and wish you the best of luck. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sammy Swindell. And here on the final night of the Knoxville Nationals, it's all main event racing, and we begin our coverage with the D feature. On the pole is Dennis Moore Jr. from right here in Iowa. A lot of fans in the stands for him. Outside, uh, Dennis on the front row is Don Brown Jr., a whole lot of second-generation racers, Brian. Well, Steve, uh, the uh, intensity of the competition will increase, as will the level of competitors as the night progresses. Uh, this 12-lap D main will take four drivers out of that and move it into the C main. Theoretically, the high finishers, if they can do it, advance from there. They'll move on to the B main and then finally into the Knoxville National Championship. The A main is work. But uh, we saw Doug Wolfgang a number of years back start after bad qualifying problems and uh, a series of uh, uh, bad finishes in the races leading up to this night. Work his way in a very dramatic series of events uh, and, and finishes through this field, but it's very difficult to get into the A main from way back here. And uh, the guys really in this field are low budget racers, they're young guys getting a start. They're really looking forward to showing r their wares in front of a, a servant group of car owners and taking home some money. The green is out for 12 laps of racing, only four transfer to the C feature. And at the start, the man of the pole, number 71, Dennis Ford Jr., he is long gone. Sure is, Dennis Moore uh, running right out of Iowa. A local boy knows his way around here and is doing a fine job at this point on board a uh, Challenger chassis automobile owned by his father. The battle for second place, Tim T. Don Garout Jr. and 1WK Kevin Fry. Let's remember only four goes in the main event. Back in the fourth position here, you get a quick look at 21K Lou Kennedy Jr. Okay, so the battle, though, has really developed between uh, Don Drought Jr. and Kevin Fry in that battle for second position. And, Brock, in addition to youngsters out here trying to prove their medal in the d main, you've also got a few veterans that had problems that didn't run all that well and been forced back here into kind of AAA ball to try to get to the bigs. That's right. As uh, we watch that uh, 10 T of uh, Don Drought continue to hold off Kevin Fry. And remember now, only four players move on out of this field. So everybody else is going to watch for the rest of the evening. So a lot at stake here for all of these drivers. And as I said earlier, a chance to uh, really run with the big boys as the yellow comes out. And the problem on the racetrack is the 15 in car of Chris Eckert. He has stopped over in turn number four. Obviously some kind of a mechanical failure. He didn't hit anyone. The wing's still on the car, so it didn't get upside down. They'll get a push truck out there to either restart him for the remainder of the race or pushing back to his pits, his choice. Meanwhile, in the infield, we see a crewman for the number two car of Andy Hillenberg grooving that all-important right rear tire. While back on the track, the action continues. Right now, it's time to get a restart on the D feature. And up front is Dennis Moore, Jr. from Iowa. Dondra, Jr. in the 10 T car. Kevin Fry, 1 WK. 21K is Luke Kennedy Jr. And down the field away, you'll see Peter Murphy, the 2AU. AU means from Australia. And there's at least three drivers we'll be seeing tonight from down under. Absolutely. And all good ones, believe me. These guys really run uh, well down uh, in Australia and in New Zealand as well, where sprint car racing is also popular. 
All right, Greg Hunt in the 3H car. He anticipated that start just beautifully and blew right by Luke Kennedy Jr. Went from sixth to fourth. And remember, fourth is the bump spot as far as transferring is concerned. Wow, what a move. It was a great move. As uh, we watched, uh, that's the one WK of uh, Kevin Price. He's by uh, the Horn 10 car down draw Jr. for second place. And Greg Hodden at that 3-H car, he is hammered down. He is gone by 10 team Don Trout Jr. and has moved into third. Not bad in about a lap and a half and six. <laughs> he is flying. No question about it there. You see him sweep down into this uh, relatively low banked uh, turns uh, three and four and down the front straightaway. Knoxville, uh, this half mile is in great shape tonight, Steve. It's just a beautiful racing surface. And it has not holed up over four nights of racing. Real tribute to the men and women that uh, prepare the track. It's a lot of hard work. But, uh, they do it. It's almost a religion to them. 21K, Luke Kennedy Jr. is challenging 10T now. That is Donnie Drought Jr. for the fourth position. Everybody wants to be fourth or further to the front. And here comes Bobby Burroughs to challenge Kennedy for the fifth spot. That is Burroughs in the 52U car. The rim machine down low. Oh, uh, Burroughs uh, dumped that thing upside down last night in a preliminary race. They snapped a wing on it, and he went on to finish the heat after some quick repairs. And out of Everett, Washington, Bobby Burroughs now gets by Kennedy and is running well. So uh, he's off to a good, good start here so far, Steve. Yeah, but to really cash in, Bobby Burroughs, 52 you has got to get by Don Drow Jr., the 10 T guard for fourth in the transfer position. And he got him with not much time to spare. Now he's got to hold on to it. Well, there you see uh, Burroughs just uh, sailing around uh, turn three and off turn number four as uh, that 10-T car, Don Drug Jr., comes right back at him but can't seem to... Uh, he's gone high, but uh, Burroughs seems to be able to hold him off. Well, in the early going here, typically on almost any dirt track, the groove is in the middle of the racetrack. It'll get higher and it'll get lower as the evening wears on, but right now, the quick way around is right in the middle. And that's what Burroughs is doing. White flag out on a beautiful night here at Knoxville on the final lap here of the D Main. It looks like Bobby Burroughs will get that last transfer spot. Yep, not much to go. Less than a quarter of a mile as Bobby Burroughs in the 52U car did a terrific job when it counted. The winner, 71 Dennis Moore Jr., was never really challenged. One WK Kevin Pry for second. 3-H Greg Hodnett for third, but the guy we were really watching was Bobby Burroughs, who comes uh, back from last night's upside down to his Brock Benson to transferring to the C feature tonight, but it'll only get tougher. That's right, and they won't have a whole lot of time. It's just about enough time to possibly change a tire or two, uh, throw in some fuel, and make whatever slight suspension changes, but no time otherwise. So these guys, a lot of pressure on them, uh, on uh, Burrow, Hodnett, Fry, and Moore to get ready to go almost instantaneously as we get ready to line up for the uh, C feature. But right now, let's go down to Steve, who's with a man who in many ways is synonymous with outlaw sprint car racing, Bobby Allen from Hanover, Pennsylvania. Bobby, C main coming up. This is survival time now for you. Yeah, we're, uh, we made a few changes, and I think it feels pretty good, so I think we're going to take a shot at it. How all out are you willing to go? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, I kind of run this whole show myself, so I, uh, if the thing feels real good and I feel fast enough, then I'll uh, go all out. And then if, uh, if it don't feel the best, then I'll, uh, you know, I'll take it as it comes. But um, I'm hoping everything feels all right so I can go for it. We're hoping for you also. Thank you all. So it's do or die right now for the original outlaw as he will join up with this field for the C feature. Jimmy Sills from California, former track record holder here, starts on the pole. Jerry Riker Jr. alongside him. Fred Raymer, a good runner in row number two. Jerry Stone in row three alongside Brian Cheney. And in row number four, Gary Brazier, the 21A U car, who absolutely stunned a jam-packed audience last night, winning the A feature in the preliminary evening. Boy, I mean, this kid has got a lot of driving talent. In fact, he's the best of a bunch of great drivers here this year from down under and their skill and enthusiasm is really a pleasure to watch. You know, I was over at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum today with all of the restored cars and was reminded once again about how far the safety aspects of these modern designs have come. 
there was a day when there were no seat belts or roll cages. Very dangerous machines racing on dirt tracks with board fences. And at one time, the thinking was it was better to be thrown from the car in an incident. Now we got roll bars, we got five and six point harnesses, we've got driving suits, arm restraints, and the big wing on these cars that has added greatly to their safety over the last decade or so. A lot of people hate them, a lot of people love them, but they save lives. Here we go. For 15 laps the top four, go to the A-Main out of the sea. Jimmy Sills and his gambler uh, chassis automobile out of Placerville, California. We saw him set the track record here a number of years back. A fine driver here in, in the, the, the uh, Big Dirt Championship cars as Bobby Allen tries to struggle his way up amongst them. And he's starting way back there in 16th place. He's picked up a couple of spots, but he's got a long way to go. Yeah, Bobby just got around the 61A car of Terry Gray for the 14th position. He needs to pass 10 more cars. It's really interesting to watch Allen run. He's so disciplined. He just sits down there in that bottom groove and works his way underneath almost everybody. He's so steady and so kind of consistent that anybody that gets a little wide or bobbles at all, and Allen's by him. You know, Allen builds his own chassis, not only for himself, but his brother Joey, who uh, has a guaranteed starting spot in the A main. So uh, those two guys came in here with a couple of Allen built sprint cars. He doesn't really build any any for any customer, but he puts together his own chassis and uh, campaigns his own car. Really an independent in many, many ways, but uh, always, uh, always consistent, uh, always shows up with a car that looks like it's been rolled about seven times. I am uh, never going to win any prizes for appearance, but boy, underneath that kind of beat up bodywork, there's a very, very good chassis. Bobby admitted last night that he needs a new car. He's been racing too much. He hasn't had time to actually uh, build himself a new car. Here's your leader, 7N, Jimmy Sills from the gold country of Northern California, a real veteran with wings or without them in the CRA. A very popular driver anywhere he goes. Jimmy Seals just tearing up Knoxville tonight in the C feature. There is Bobby Allen. He is struggling. In fact, he's fallen back a place to 15th. He's trying to get past 61A of Terry Gray. He passed Terry before, but Terry paid him back. Well, let me crowd up the second of the 3K car. Another one up there, Bobby, would like to get around. He's really got to start moving. Let's remember there's only 15 laps here. As the races get tougher, they also get longer. Well, what he needs is a yellow, Steve, is to pack everybody up so he can jump a couple of people on, a, on the restarts and uh, slowly work his way toward the front as we uh, run down uh, the halfway mark here. And uh, he is really not making the kind of headway uh, that he would be hoping for. And he's, I'm sure he's looking for a yellow. Well, he got past Terry Gray again. The 61 acre on his back at least uh, into the 14th position. But this is not the Bobby Allen we saw two years ago when he won the 50 grand of the Knoxville Nationals. He just doesn't have, it's not power, it's handling. And there's the leader, Jimmy Sills. Jimmy is still unchallenged. And when you can start, as Jimmy did up front, immediately get the lead. What? Look at him steering that car. He's actually testing a little bit for the race to come. Well, Sills is really good. We've seen him run at the Copper Classic on the mile uh, asphalt at Phoenix International Raceway, run the big uh, championship uh, dirt cars uh, with great alacrity. Jimmy Sills is a very accomplished driver in all kinds of machinery. Hey, and there is a problem. The car up against the fence. I thought maybe that was going to give Bobby Allen the yellow he needed, but not so. That was uh, Dennis Moore Jr. who got up there very, very fast. I think he tagged the fence a bit. But he's still going. By gosh, there will be a yellow. Thank you, Bobby Allen. Well, that is uh, Dennis Moore Jr. just won the uh, feature just before this as we watched uh, Doug Clark, the starter, wave the yellow flag to bring everybody down to uh, reduce speed so they can clear away uh, the automobile of Moore's. And uh, he's got to be disappointed. See, it looks like a tire possibly went down on him on the right side, which may have caused uh, him to clip the wall. And no problem there, no damage done. They just need to clear away the car. Let's take a look and see if we can determine exactly what happened there. There you see Dennis up against the fence and uh, clipped it a little bit. Then he uh, almost gets it uh, really out of shape, but uh, brings it to a halt, uh, kind of scrubbing down the wall, which is a good idea when you're up against it. You don't try to uh, get back down into traffic where you can really get into trouble. So uh, they'll push the car off and uh, clear it away. And uh, unfortunately, he is through for the night. Well, the yellow coming out maybe was good news for guys like uh, Bobby Allen, but not so for Jimmy Sills. His 7N car, he had built up a huge lead. Now Fred Raymer in the 21R car is right on his push bar. Right behind Raymer is Jerry Richard Jr. And 7H2O of Pete Bottler. He's in the fourth and final transfer spot. 
This will be a great opportunity for the fans, though, to see some good heads-up sprint car racing. Yeah, well, don't discount Freddie Raymer because he's a good Pennsylvania driver, and he knows he's been here before, and he knows his way around. So let's see what he can do against Jimmy Sells. And Jimmy Sells down low, and Raymer gets a great shot off turn number four and takes the lead. He got the drive out of the corner and said bye-bye, Jimmy. That was a great, great move. And look at this. Here comes Pete Butt with a 7H2O car. He is also by the 7 n car of Jimmy Sills. Is Jimmy having problems, or did these guys uh, just get revitalized here? Well, it's hard to say, but uh, for sure, Sills has fallen back a little bit. Now he's got to worry, because remember, only four guys move on. Now, Sills has repassed Butler in the 7H2O car. Maybe Jimmy just got a bad start, just wasn't on the gas in it up, and the other guys anticipated the start of it. Now, Jimmy battling back. Well, definitely, uh, if he was a little slow off the throttle, it would take him perhaps a half a mile to get back that maximum 100% velocity. And Raymer, of course, look at this. That's Butler one more time by Sill. So these two number seven automobiles, seven and seven H2O, going at it here for the second spot. Well, there's some movement further back in this pack as well. It's making a hard charge. And there we see him right there, the 21 AU car, the young Aussie Gary Brasher. He is trying, he is going to pass Jimmy Sills at 7 in for the third position. Sills is now in the last transfer spot. He went from potential winner to potentially being bumped out. I don't know what's going on here because uh, Jimmy, whether or not he's uh, lost uh, tires coming down on him or what, but that race car is definitely way, way off from its potential in the opening lap. Oh, absolutely. It was a, a rocket ship. Looked like a blown Chrysler Hemi in a goat cart. <laughs> it was gone, well, but no longer. Oh, boy. And Jimmy Sills trying to get back at uh, Gary uh, Brazier, but it's not going to work at this point as he continues to lose ground. And I wonder if he can hold on to that four spot now because uh, there is Kenny Hansen in a 3HK. The white flag is out. Hansen seems to be moving up to try to challenge Sills as well. And Hansen goes by him. Jimmy Sills has gone from leader to on the trailer unless he can get a miracle here. He led for eight laps, but the checkered flag is out for 21R, Fred Raymer. He has won the C feature here tonight, 15 laps of hard racing in Knoxville. Jimmy Sills will not transfer. That is a shocker. It's a shocker that Jimmy Sills was even in the C main instead of the A to begin with. Fred Raymer, good job, Fred. Now, you better put your race hat on, buddy, because you're going to start at the back of the B. That is a dubious honor, Fred. Uh, believe me, and a couple of big names like Jimmy Sills and Bobby Allen failed even to get that far. Back in the pits, here is one of the crewmen on the Bobby Davis Jr. number four car, again working on that right rear tire, and deservedly so. He'll be alongside Steve Kenzer in the front row of the A feature. Meanwhile, there's a story developing with one of tonight's top runners. Now, this was just moments ago. Jack Howden's child took the number 10 car out of Casey Luna just to warm it up, just to get it started in preparation for the A main and blew the Ford engine. They rushed into the pits. Their crew headed out to the transporter to get the backup motor. I talked to Jack. Well, Jack, there's nothing worse than problems on hot laps for the A main. Up a lot of smoke out of the 10 car. Jack Howdenshell pitching in himself. Engine change, Jack? Yeah, we just uh, dropped a, uh, broke a rod or something. Just started messing and broke. Okay. Will they have enough time to make it happen? The KC Luna crew, some of the best in the business, and they have a spare forward engine. You can bet on that. Well, we'll keep up with that story because Jack Hudenchild, of course, is one of the most popular of the outlaw drivers and literally thousands of fans in this standing room only crowd will want to see him run well. But right now, the man of the moment is Freddie Raymer out of Pennsylvania who won that C feature. In so doing, he uh, beat out guys like Pete Butler and Gary Brazier who finished in second and third. Gary, of course, the Australian champion. Right now, Steve is down with Freddie Raymer in the pits. Well, Fred, even with a couple of yellows that allowed him to catch up, they still couldn't handle you in that, uh, that main. That was great. Yeah, you know, it felt good to win one here. I'm just glad to be out here. You know, we're going to have a tough time in the B, but we're out here now tonight just to get time in for next year, you know, come back and try and start off better. Already thinking about next year at Knoxville? Well, when you're in the C and then the B, you're definitely thinking of next year because it's going to be a tough road unless you're Doug Wolfgang. Yeah, and you're going to be at the back of the B. Yeah, way back. You know, and we were able to get by Jimmy, but getting by the rest of the good, you know, the good cars in that B is going to be a tough deal. Thanks for a great show. Okay, thank you very much.
Well, Fred uh, refers to Doug Wolfgang, who happily is here tonight looking great after suffering very serious injuries earlier in the season. His story of a comeback here at Knoxville a few years ago is the stuff of legend. We'll talk about that in a minute, but right now, let's go down to Steve, who's with a man who has finished for the night, Bobby Allen. Well, Bobby, I guess we just didn't have the horse for the chorus tonight. My motor's running good. The car's just not handling. I, just, I was just sliding all over the place. Never got, never had any good feel of the car. Well, I guess it's so long for now. The night's over. Yeah, I got to wait till Monday now. <laughs> they race every night of the week if they can. Right now, however, the field is out and warming up for the B feature, which promises to be a great 20 lap with veteran Frankie Kerr on the pole. And here's some good news. In the Jack Howden style pit, that spare board engine is going into the number 10 car. They had to go outside the facility into their transporter and bring that engine in. They were a little worried about the time being consumed there, but Casey looked at the car and said, I'm not worried, they know where it is, they'll find it, they'll bring it back. And Casey is not only a sprint car enthusiast, he is the Lieutenant Governor of the great state of New Mexico. Brock, as we show everyone at home, the drivers that will be in the B-Main, let's you and I reminisce a little bit about the B-Main of 1990. You remember that one? I sure do, Steve, because at the back of the pack was a man by the name of Doug Wolfgang who had worked his way up through the series of preliminaries and had to finish among the top two to advance into the A main. Almost an insurmountable task. That's right, he had crashed horribly on Thursday night. He was sore, he had an untried car, but he did it, went to the A main, and not only that, but his fourth from the back of the A main. No one here at Knoxville will ever forget it, including, I'm sure you and I. Absolutely, and happily, as I said earlier, Doug Wolfgang on the way to a complete recovery. He is uh, here tonight, brought the house down with cheers as he appeared, and uh, with his wife and family, and uh, one of the greatest sprint car competitors of all time, happily uh, survived and uh, is repairing quickly after that terrible crash he had in Kansas City. All right, Frankie Kerr, the 23 S car, is on the pole here, the 39 car of Bob White, the eight car of Craig Keel, and 55 Max Dumpsney in Australia in the fourth position. Will the full moon, the B main, start the records? This is usually where it happens. Well, this is where the uh, tension really gets high because you've got to get from here, you've got to get into the A main, and that's where the big bucks are. 50 grand to win that one. Right now, though, a mob scene in turn number two as they head down the back straightaway, and it is Frankie Kerr and Bob White going at it side by side. And how about Max Dumsney, the Aussie in the 55 car? He has moved up brilliantly. As a matter of fact, he's now sitting in the second spot, having started in fourth. So Max is on a charge here as the field sweeps down the back straightaway. That 39 car, that is Bob White. But Jamie Moyle comes out of the fifth starting spot has moved up in that a challenge as well. That's the 5T car. All right, back up front, 23S, Frankie Kerr, 55, Max Dumsney, and number 14, Tim Green are the top three cars, and they are right there. Any one of them could win the B-Main. Well, Tim Green, of course, we haven't seen him much because he's been running mostly on the West Coast, but a solid performer, excellent driver uh, from up northern California, up in Jimmy Sills territory. Came in here and uh, is showing his uh, style as he rides in the third spot, but ready to challenge for the lead. And here are our leaders once again. There is the orange car, 23S of Frankie Kerr. Max Dumsney riding right in his wake. Both drivers taking a high road out of turn number four. Let's see if they get down low in turn one and turn two. No, they do not. They're up planning that driving right wheel right in the edge of the cushion. Brock trying to get maximum acceleration out of the corner. Well, that seems to be the fast way around here right now. Nobody running down in the bottom at this point. Although I got a bit if Bobby Allen was in here, he'd probably be down there. But nobody else is. The fast guy's up on top up against that cushion. And here's the interval back to sixth place as they stream through your picture. Uh, number 39, Bob White back in sixth, followed by eight, Craig Keel and 2L, Ed Lynch, Jr. Ed Lynch, Jr. started in the 11th position, so he's made a little bit of progress. Okay, back to the leaders as we watch. Frankie Kerr out of Pennsylvania continue to dominate here. Right behind him, the Australian star, Max Dumsley. And behind him, Jamie Moyle in the 5T. Jamie has not given up. He's pushing right in there, but look at Dumsley. He's gone down low, Steve. Trying to get underneath uh, Frankie Kerr, but Frankie wouldn't have any of it. 
For Max Dumsney, sprint car racing is truly a family affair. We saw his wife, Melinda, compete last night and came very close to making the finals here, but not quite. But you bet she's uh, on top of the trailer right now, screaming her lungs out because her husband's got a good shot at going to the A-Main. All right, as we watch Frankie Kerr down in the middle here, and Dumsney uh, up on top, down the back straightaway past that big collection of sweets and that monster grandstand that is packed full on the back straightaway. Here is that battle for the fourth and final transfer spot. 5T, Jamie Moyle, another Australian, and 7TW, Kenny Jacobs. Kenny Jacobs has been the track champion around this country. I mean, this is no nobody to fool with. But look at this. Jamie Moyle just blasted by Tim Green, who uh, also is uh, no amateur like Kenny Jacobs. So Jamie Moyle has just flown by a couple of the best guys in the business, Tim Green and Kenny Jacobs. And he's now in third, closing on these two cars. 23S Frankie Kerr and 55 Max Dempsey running one and two. But Jamie is coming on to that 5T car. He sure is. He is fair flying. There you see the leaders up there. As they come, there's Frankie Kerr, and I'll tell you what, he's just got around the 88 car. That's Joey Saldana. His dad, Joe Saldana, was a fine driver, now a car builder up in Indiana. So uh, Joey uh, cutting his teeth there uh, against some really good shoes. All right, 23S, Frankie Kerr standing on the gas, trying to hang on to the lead over the two guys right behind him, Max Dunsney and Jamie Boyle, the Australian Armada, the passing flag being waved there to the lap traffic. Get out of the way. Oh, down the back straightaway. There's Frankie Kerr in the orange car as he charges into some slower traffic. That could balk him, slow him up just a little bit, and that's all you need in this kind of competition. Just a wink of a stopwatch, and somebody is all over your nerf bar. All right, there's another lap car, the 23S Frankie Kerr. The leader will have to contend with, and that's the 12 car of Skip Jackson. Jackson hears him coming, sees the passing flag, and cooperates. Yeah, most of these guys are pretty good about that. They, uh, but once again, though, they don't have rear view mirrors, and it's just instinct that uh, they hear that motor, that throb of that engine, and, and uh, the vibration of a car near them, and uh, they tend to get out of the way. Look how well this track is holding up, Brock. It's now got really three grids. It's a little bit greasy as any track would be, but not a hole in it anywhere. That's how the balance of these cars is put them into or over the wall, as we've seen too many times in the past. Oh, yeah. It's uh, very easy for these big, big right rear cars just uh, scoured great chunks of dirt out of some badly prepared racetracks, and that's when it gets really dangerous. 55, Max Dumsney. He is getting tremendous pressure from Kenny Jacobs. Kenny Jacobs passes him in the 7 TW car. Jacobs found passing gear in a normally high gear sprint car. He's in the second spot, and now moves up on that same number 12 lap car as Gibbs Jackson. Yeah, he sat back there for a while, and I think maybe some of the faster guys, uh, tires are going away a little bit on him, but uh, Jacobs conserving that rubber is now really standing on the uh, methanol, as it were, and he is really, really running away from everybody other than the leader, and that's Frankie Kerr. Well, Kenny got by the 12 car of Skip Jackson, but now we're looking at the 5T car, Jamie Moyle. He is coming up to challenge Max Dumsey for that third spot. I wonder if Dumsey really has a tire going away. Brock, he's driven that car mighty hard up high. He has, and that really loads that right rear. So uh, there's your leader, Frankie Kerr. Uh, unchallenged at this point, doing an excellent job. A fine driver out of the Pennsylvania circuit that uh, has uh, excellent credentials. And boy, he is just tearing it around this half mile in Knoxville. All he's got to do is continue what he's doing, and he's going to win the B feature. But I tell you, there's still a tremendous battle between that 5T car of Jamie Moyle. There he is right there. And 55 Max Dumsney is the two Australians now are beating up on each other. Moyle gets a little bit sideways there. Look at him go up high and prevent a pass. White flag, the last lap. Final lap as uh, these two Australians. There is Moyle, and right behind him, Max uh, Dumsney going at it. Hey, Max has only got a little bit of a way to go to get by him. The checker is out. Frankie's won it. Let's see. Can Jamie Moyle hold him off? He does. And of course, in second with a brilliant drive, come from behind special 7TW at Kenny Jacobs. That puts Jamie Moyle in the third spot and also a transfer spot for 55 Max Dumsney. So there's going to be plenty of Australians represented in the A feature. The only race left on tonight's program. What a fine job by Frankie Kerr, though. Brock, he just stood on the gas, just executed perfectly.
He sure did. Uh, broke out uh, right away and just uh, conserved his rubber. Ran around, uh, stayed out of trouble. A classic uh, piece of sprint car driving. And it looks like the number 10 car will make it. Jack, we got to be a little better than you did a few minutes ago. Yeah, we're going to be able to make it. Uh, we only need about 10 more minutes on it. Well, you've got that. Uh, the crew all busy changing the engine. What about the rest of the car? They normally would uh, get fine-tuned for you. Uh, we just got a bunch of guys here pitching in on it, helping us, so I think we're going to make it. I'm sure they are. Well, you can be sure that the uh, competitors here at Knoxville, the, uh, his fellow outlaws and the drivers from all over the country are going to run in the A feature. Give him a little bit of a slack to get the uh, car onto the racetrack. All right, the results are official from the B feature. Frankie Kerr wins it in the 23S car. Kenny Jacobs, Jamie Moyle, and Max Dumpney. While all transfer Californian Tim Green just missed. Lynch, White, Hanson, Shepard, and Monson. Well, they will round out the top ten, but none of them will go to the A-man. Brock right now is with the winner. Well, first of all, Frankie, great race. Uh, Max ran up on you a little bit, but uh, I'm sure you were hoping to go green all the way. But, boy, I'll tell you, the odds were against it, I would think. Well, so far this week, the race has been really clean, and uh, like most of the features have gone nonstop, and uh, I kind of hoped it would. Did you feel he, he got up near you a couple of times going down into one? Did you know he was there? Then he fell way back, so you didn't have any challenge late in the race. Well, I saw someone down there. I didn't know who it was, and so I changed my pattern a little bit, entering one, and uh, it definitely helped. Oh, yeah, it did. He, I don't know whether he lost a tire or something, but things were going back. But you had a wide, was your crew telling you you were wide open and no problem? I was too busy driving <laughs> instead of looking. Uh, it was a great job. The guys are getting ready now. You got the A-Main, hey, not a whole lot of time to get ready. What kind of change are you going to make in the car? Uh, we're going to just put a pair of fresh tires on and probably go. Okay, good luck. Good job. Thank you. Steve? Here's an old pal, the driver of the 22 car, Jeff Swindell, helping get the Maxim chassis printer ready that's owned by Jack Eldon. He will start 10th on the A-Main grid. Earlier this weekend, I had a tremendous thrill, an opportunity to talk to the man who was so warmly welcomed back to his home track, Doug Wolfgang. Doug, if Elvis had shown up in the flesh, he wouldn't have gotten the kind of welcome you did from your friends and fans here in Knoxville. It's been amazing. <laughs> it is kind of amazing. I think I'd clap for Elvis before me. I know that, especially after marrying a 30-year-old person from Mississippi. Not these folks. They love you here. <laughs> yeah, they do. I've been here a long time, no longer than most of the guys that race here. I think I was here uh, 17 or 18 years. You know, uh, you said you wouldn't show up at Knoxville or anywhere in a wheelchair, and three weeks ago you were in one, and now we're standing here together. I'm not in a wheelchair, neither. No, sir. <laughs> I worked hard the last few weeks to try to get my leg strength up and, and uh, still not uh, hurt myself because one of the things that's happening, if I do too much, I start breaking grafts loose and bleeding all over and I it's it's just better not to do that so but I'm okay right now I'd be able to walk around with a cane a little bit and uh, I can go maybe four or five city blocks and and you know and stuff like that so I'm coming along pretty good the question everyone wants to know how soon can you make a decision physically and emotionally about your career uh, emotionally I'm ready to roll tonight uh, I like to be sick. We've attracted quite a crowd here. I love to sit on the front row tonight and try to win it. I can tell you that. I'm happy for Steve. He is. Uh, physically, I don't know when I'm going to be ready, and it's going to make, it's going to make uh, the guy who's going to make the decision is not only me, but one of the doctors and neurosurgeon, because not only did I uh, burn myself, the burns are not too critical as far as whether I can come back racing or not. It's I broke my neck at the same time, and there's a vertebrae up there that's that's uh, deciding that it doesn't want to take calcium at the rate of speed that I would like it to to make it uh, safe to race again. Right now, it is not safe, and it would be stupid for me to race even if I was physically ready, which I am not. But I don't know if it's going to heal or not. We'll just have to wait and see. Good to see you. Thank you. What a great competitor, Doug Wolfgang. And here is where he would like to be, in the front row of the E feature at Knoxville. And Brock, the Outlaws are in the traditional four abreast salute to the crowd. A moment that uh, leads off every feature race at every Outlaw event, but I'll tell you what, 
very seldom and the kind of stakes uh, up for grabs as they are here tonight. And look at this green scan. They are doing the wave as the first row comes by. That's become a tradition over the last few years here. I'll tell you, you couldn't get a ticket for this race. In fact, there were scalpers out front this afternoon. One guy was trying to get $115 for two tickets. I'll bet you got it, too, because this is a packed, packed grandstand. The crew people uh, lined up to uh, give the wave as well. <laughs> Everybody is up for this deal. Although, I tell you what, a lot of people have pretty much resolved themselves that uh, Steve Kinzer, unless he has uh, some kind of problems, is going to win his eighth. And you know he has won them in groups of three, and this would be the middle leg of a third hat trick. Yeah, it, uh, yeah the odds really favor this man who is the winningest sprint car driver of modern times and certainly ranked among the greatest of all time. Uh, way back, though, these guys, they're going to fight to get up amongst them. Uh, Joey Allen, uh, that's Bobby's brother, uh, Frankie Kerr, Kenny Jenkins. We saw those guys run earlier. And rounding out the field, a couple of Aussies, Jamie Moyle and Max Dumsey, they're going to try to get up and just take home some of those Yankee bucks. That's their simple objective. Yeah, they spend about a buck 25 down under. Our money's good down there, unlike some other places. Now, Steve Genzer on the pole. How do they stop him? You heard one driver say, we need yellows, and lots of them. We can't let him just run away and start lapping cars early. They would hope he has a bad start. I wouldn't bet on that, if you know anything about Steve Kinzer. His uncle Carl, the crew chief engine builder, has given him one heck of a motor, probably 800 horsepower and about a 1,250-pound spreader. Fuel tank full of menthol fuel. Steve Kenzer, let's remember on the inside of the right of your screen as the Knoxville Nationals is underway. And as expected, Steve Kenzer leaps off the pole to take it, uh, the field down into turn number one and two and down the back straightaway. A mob scene behind him now. And look at this. Andy Hellenberg jumps out of his starting position to take over second ahead of Bobby Davis Jr. Oh, yeah, he had a brilliant start. And here is Sammy Swindell, the big black number one car. Sammy really maybe not having the setup right now. He's fighting that automobile. He's still in the seventh position. No progress there so far. The battle for second is between Andy Hillenberg and the number four car of Bobby Davis Jr. Bobby Davis Jr. is losing a little ground, although he's staying down in the bottom, trying to work that bottom groove. There is Jeff and Sammy Swindell going at it at mid-pack. But right now, the race for second continues to be between Andy Hillenberg and uh, Bobby Davis Jr. There you see them circulating the racetrack. Uh, Steve Kinzer has already disappeared, literally flown away from the field, has about a 20-car length lead. So the race is back in the pack, including this man, Sammy Swindell, in the black number one. But the best race is a little forward to Sammy, and that, of course, is number four. Bobby Davis Jr. started outside the front row, just behind number two, Andy Hillenberg, who got a better start than Bobby did. And also Danny Lasoski, uh, the front line runner here every Saturday night. He is hanging right in there for four spot. And Brock, very unusual here at the Knoxville Nationals to not get a yellow on the first couple of laps. No, absolutely. A great race in the racetrack in perfect condition, and that helps in an excellent field of drivers. A lot of guys thought maybe the man that would really challenge uh, Steve Kinzer would be that number five driver, Danny Lasowski. There, Jack Hodgechild and Casey Luna Ford trying to work his way up. But, of course, that uh, last moment engine change really put the pressure on that team. They did not have any chance, really, to run the car and change any kind of setup in hot lap. He has, however, moved up just one position. And now he's getting a lot of pressure from behind. That is Stevie Smith in the 77 car, who is most trying to move up. Remember, he started way, way in the back. That's Andy Hillenberg and Bobby Davis Jr. still going at it for the second spot. But Danny Lasowski is expected, beginning to move up to challenge. But making the pass is Bobby Davis Jr. He is around Andy Hillenberg and is second, a very distant second, to number 11, Steve Kinzer. Not even in your picture. We don't have a lens long enough for that. But look, at Danny Lasowski dropped in low to take over that third spot from Andy Hillenberg. Andy Hillenberg went way wide, and that cost him dearly. So Danny Lasowski starts to make his move, and uh, Bobby Davis Jr. hangs in there. That's Mark Kinzer 
who has not been able to challenge at this point in that orange number 5M. There he is up high, but he tries to get up around uh, Andy Hillenberg as well. There's Hillenberg down low, the orange 5 of Mark Kinzer. As they go down the back straightaway, Kinzer opens out a little bit as he uh, tries to move in on Bobby Davis Jr. and Danny Lasowski up ahead of him. And here is Danny Lasowski running third and already lapping cars, which means the drivers in first and second are doing likewise. And here's where it gets very, very interesting. You no longer have the racetrack all to yourself, as Steve Kinzer did at the start. Now you've got to play those cars. Use them like pawns. Pick and choose. Think two and three cars ahead of yourself. Well, and that's, of course, what lost him the big money race at uh, Rossburg, Ohio, at Eldora in the Kings Royal. He got clipped by a uh, lap car, Steve Kinzer did, and it took him out and gave Sammy Swindell the victory. So uh, you really have to be careful. Nobody uh, is trying to get in each other's way, but these cars with 800 horsepower riding on a very slick racetrack, people can't always put them exactly where they want them. There is the master in the 11th car. Look at him control that vehicle. Second nature. He's as comfortable in that machine as you are in the family station wagon. Maybe even a little more so. Probably safer too as a matter of fact. Cans are able to not overuse that right rear tire. You don't see him down low wearing it off. He's taking it up high. The easy route. Passing cars on the high side. Ah, a masterful drive. Right around Dave Laney with no problem as we go back to the race between the Swindell family. That's Jeff who's gotten by Sammy. Uh, Jeff in the blue 22 as they come uh, down the front straightaway. And Sammy definitely not able to challenge at this stage of the race. And he certainly is hoping for a yellow. You know, it's so hard from the middle of the back of the pack. You can't just stand on the gas like the guys in the first two rows can. You're going to hit somebody in front of you if they have a problem and cause a massive pileup. That's why it's so important to time trial well here in the early days at Knoxville. Sammy Swindell, the black number one car, has passed his brother, repassed him, I should say, Jeff. The Swindell boys going at it, hammer and tongue, but neither one of them making the kind of run they had hoped for, Brock. No, absolutely not. As we watch uh, Swindell sweep down through uh, turns three and four, but right now it is Steve Kinzer absolutely dominating this event, as a lot of people expected or feared. In fact, there was a, uh, an airplane that flew over this afternoon trailing a uh, sign that said, Anybody but Kinzer, anybody. But I'm afraid that's not to be the case tonight, although Sammy Swindell is trying, as, as is everybody. But you talk about a dream team when the Kinzer family, that is uh, Uncle Carl and Steve Kinzer, get this car right. And they are in orbit. They really operate on a plateau, in a sense, somewhat higher than everybody else. A different kind of automobile and a different kind of driver. We've been watching Sammy Swindell. He is a desperate man on that racetrack. You saw him all over in an effort to try to catch the blue and white number 11 of Steve Kinzer. The Babe Ruth of sprint car racing. Is that too big a cliche? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, when he is on, he is just awesome. And he is on tonight. And there won't be any catching him unless somebody gets in his way or something breaks on that number 11. There he goes underneath Jack Howdenchild uh, as if Howdenchild was an amateur. And he is not. He's a brilliant driver and a fine race car. But Steve Kinzer on this evening is just so hooked up. He's got the car, he's got the motor, he obviously has the personal ability. He's physically fit, a former wrestling champion in his high school days. I mean, he is going to be a powerhouse in this sport for as long as he chooses to race. Well, he's been asked many times whether if he's going to go someplace else, and I think he's, his answer is, I would consider it if I had a first-class ride. And believe me, that thing is a first-class ride right there. I tell you, you can make a good living at uh, the level of sprint car racing that uh, this man enjoys from Indiana, but boy, it's in hard on the body and the family. Here's it. You race a lot of nights of the week is what I'm saying. Here's the race for the fifth position between Mark Kent to the 5M car and number one Sammy Swindell, and it tells you how tough tonight has been. They started sixth and seventh, and now they're fifth and sixth. Yeah, and uh, as a matter of fact, I talked earlier about Kinzer reaching that higher plateau on occasion. Swindell is also capable of it, uh, not tonight, uh, as was another driver you talked to earlier. He's not running tonight, but uh, obviously Doug Wolfgang was a member of that elite group of drivers who seemed to be able to elevate themselves on certain nights beyond anybody else's capacity to run with them. Sammy Swindell gets around Mark Kinzer in the 5M car for that fifth position. Sammy right now is just racing for money. The higher you finish, the more money you're going to make. Pretty simple for me. And there's a ton of it to be uh, passed out here tonight. This is a wealthiest uh, sprint car race in uh, 
on the schedule and uh, over uh, $300,000 that is passed out here in the course of four days of racing that began uh, the prior Wednesday. So Mark Kinzer and Sammy Swindell continue to struggle here trying to uh, hold on to that uh, fifth spot. Swindell currently ahead of Mark, but uh, we got a ways to go, and uh, these two guys are very good. And it looks like their cars are pretty well matched up. In fact, Kinzer just blew right around Sammy there coming off turn number four. Well, Sammy got bogged down just for an instant behind a lap car. That's all it takes at this kind of speed on this track to the racetrack. So Sammy Swindell gets pushed back yet another position by Mark Kinzer. And right now, his brother, uh, Jeff, beginning to move in on him. Uh, so uh, three fine young drivers uh, going at it on the final lap. Steve Kenzer, the leader, has lapped all but four cars in this entire field. One of the greatest drives the Knoxville Nationals has ever seen. The crowd beginning its roar. Here he comes at a turn number four down the front straight away for the last time. Steve Kenzer has won his eight. Knoxville National. Incredible. More than anyone else by uh, three times. As victory. And there is a fire that's Jack Houghton Childs, number 10 Ford, that is blown up down the front straightaway just as he crossed the finish line. He's got a fire under there. I'm sure fire crews will get to it. It looks like it's out. Probably an oil fire. And Brock, he's climbing out of the car. No apparent injury. But what a way to finish the race. It's as if that engine had a 30-lap fuse on it. It blew up exactly when he crossed the start-finish line. Well, there you have it. Whoever paid for that banner toe Brock was talking about earlier uh, didn't intimidate Steve Kinzer one bit. Kinzer wins it in record time ahead of Danny Lasowski, Bobby Davis Jr., Andy Hillenberg, and Mark Kinzer in pip. Sammy and Jeff Swindell finished sixth and seventh, respectively, with Keith Kaufman, Johnny Herrera, and Stevie Smith rounding out the top ten. Bedlam down here in victory lane. Steve Kinzer tonight, total domination. I tell you, everything went good. We're just glad to win this one, uh, especially eight. We're going to give them something to shoot at, I think, here. Was there even a moment you went, uh-oh, this one's going to get away? Anything even close? Well, I felt good the whole time. I just, I knew if somebody was, uh, if somebody was fast, it had to be fast there in one and two. And, I, you know, I, I was, didn't know which way to go there. I felt quicker down on the bottom of three and four, but the car felt good anywhere I put it. And Carl did a good job tonight. The king of Knoxville. Well, again, I want to I want to thank Valvoline and Carl Kenzer, uh, Greg Johnson, Scott Gerking, all the guys, uh, my crew, Mark's crew, everybody. They did a do a wonderful job. And we want to thank you for one of the greatest drives we have ever seen in an open wheel race car. Hey, when you get in that good a race car and handling that good, it makes it a little easier on me. Steve Kenzer, what a great champion. For Brock Gates, I'm Steve Evans saying so long from Knoxville 92, a presentation of Diamond P Sports.